Okay, it's time to blast off. Let's do it. Light news on Sunday, fun day. TikToker who made Kamala marketing vid gets canceled. Second dog is my brother's dog. Um, Trump is blasting the most unimaginable shit. Chase Bank TikTok meme depicting wire fraud goes viral. Chase Bank TikTok hack depicting wire fraud goes viral. Trump is Trump is blasting insane right wing memes on Twitter. Wukong chapter three later get in now. Can I get find in Brazil for seeing Twitter via the Hasanabi live stream? Fuck no, dude. First of all, Lula Libre. Okay. Secondly, secondly, you need to understand something. Okay. They let me do it. Me and the Brazilian government, we're like this. Okay. We're fucking tight. All right. So actually they want you to only, they actually want you to only see Twitter through the lens, through my lens. Did you see Zion Williamson enjoying the Great Wall of China? I have not. But Zion has actually apparently dropped down to his fucking college weight, and I'm very proud of him. Um, what is this? You're in the we news have... video on the biggest One Piece YouTube channel at 314? Wait, really? Okay. Oh, for the live action. For my original work that I did, original commentary. Okay. Um, bro, slow down. Wukong, you're going to pass me and make it hard for me to watch without spoilers? Nah, we're finishing chapter three today, Okay. Stop sending me fucking feared buck links about like uh, Twitter impression farmers and, and random Twitch streamers doing crazy stuff, please. Anyway, all right. Play dress to impress. Brother, I am not playing anything but Wukong, okay? I didn't get to play a lot of Wukong. I did not get to play a lot of Wukong last night or this morning because I'm like stuck in that boss area and I didn't want to fucking fight and defeat the boss off stream because that would be fucked up. So who cares about monkeys flinging shit? I do, man. I do. Why can't you guys be a normal fucking Twitch community that like enjoys the goddamn content? Like, what's wrong with y'all? I just don't understand it. Like, chatters are fucking little babies about this shit. It's weird. Anyway, here it is. Here it is. Light news on Sunday Funday. TikTok will make common marketing video gets canceled. Chase Bank TikTok hacked. Depicting wire fraud goes viral. Trump is blasting insane right wing memes on Twitter. Wukong chapter three later. Get in now. Um, but yeah, we got obviously the boy boy vid that I haven't even, uh, watched yet. Excited for that. Kamala to wait, uh, Ania, Kaya, come here. Okay. No, not Fiona. Kaya, come here. Place. Go Fifi. Good girl, Kaya. You're the best girl. Okay. Can, you can close it. You need to have boy boy on stream more. You seem happy when y'all are together, bro. They're in fucking, they're in Australia. I legit watch most of the Wukong gaming over the rest of the normal coverage, by the way. Yeah, the fucking Wukong gaming is is incredible, in my opinion. I always say this, like, a lot of people don't understand that, like, my... A lot of people genuinely don't recognize this, but, like, my gaming streams are my peak. Like, they are literally the best aspect of the stream. The vibes are incredible. You're rich, homie. Thank you, daddy. What? What does that have to do with anything? Shift the camera. We can't see her. Don't worry. I got you. There it is. There she is in all of her glory. Okay, look at her. Laying down. Okay. You nearly rage quit last night. What vibes you talking about? What? No. I didn't. Um, I, I didn't rage quit at all. I had to leave because of dinner. I wanted to keep going. I'm a politics frog, but I stay whenever it's a game I'm interested in. Love the accents. When you play games, try to keep chat entertained. It's always great content. Thank you. <clears throat> um anyway yeah we'll talk about the israel stuff obviously um there's also the josh shapiro murder mystery that felix uh, talked about on his twitter this is the case that josh shapiro is going to that uh, is josh shapiro is going to carry around okay we're going to be we're going to be looking at that and also obviously i'm going to be covering the israeli hostage situation because six hostages were found uh Six of the hostage bodies were found and they're dead. And it's a tricky situation because um, I haven't even looked into it that much, but I suspect that um, I suspect that people are going to say like Israel is, is obviously on fire over it, but there's massive protests happening in Tel Aviv where they're like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Get the ceasefire done, you piece of shit. Okay. Um, tens of thousands of Israelis demonstrated tonight in Tel Aviv protesting the Netanyahu government steps 
that delay the Gaza hostage deal. Um, so yeah. One of the hostage has video blaming Bibi and the Israeli occupying force. Yeah. Like shit is completely out of control. Israeli workers will go on a major strike tomorrow. We're going to be talking about that. It's like if, if the politicians don't do the job, the people will, you know what I mean? One of the hostages that was found was the son of that hostage family that talked to the DNC. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's crazy that like, obviously Israelis, like Israeli society by and large is blaming uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, it seems, or at least like the people that are protesting are uh, blaming Benjamin Netanyahu for refusing to fucking come to terms. Okay. And Bibi is like spiraling out of control. He might do some fucking crazy shit as a last ditch effort. So it's definitely a situation that we're going to be keeping a close eye on. We'll start off with that today. Um, we'll talk about the Kamala Harris response that is uh, suspected. Hirsch Goldberg, set, who was rescued, said the following when he was alive. Benjamin Netanyahu and his government should be ashamed of yourselves because the Air Force bombings killed about 70 detainees like me because all the deals that were offered to you that were rejected. Obviously, this is like, um, you know, this could be easily coerced as well. But it does correspond to like what a lot of the hostages have said, including Noah Argani, who literally, um, he was under duress and it was coerced for sure. But like, you have to remember, you have to remember something, okay? Hostages that are no longer fucking coerced and under duress have said similar things in terms of like, how the fuck have you not done a hostage deal? Or we were more afraid of the Israeli bombings than we were of like our captors in general. So... That is something that like has consistently been a through line for all of the fucking hostages that have been released, okay? That are like alive and in Israel. So I just need you to understand that um, in terms of like obviously looking at hostage testimony when they're literally in captivity, of course it's going to be duress. Of course there is going to be a level of coercion going on, but you need to understand like if this went if this cut entirely against like what hostages that have been freed are saying, that would be a different circumstance. But hostages that have been fucking freed have said the exact same shit. And they have no reason to defend the people who held them captive at goddamn gunpoint. Okay? Like, and also the families of the hostages have been treated as straight up in Israel, have been treated as an afterthought or a nuisance, like people who are spoiling Benjamin Netanyahu's ultimate goal of continuing this fucking genocide. Like, and people who themselves in Israel who want to continue the genocide, you know, because there are plenty of people who do want to continue the genocide, are still like, dog, fucking do the deal first. What the fuck is wrong with you? Okay? Yeah. So, obviously, we'll be talking about this uh, quite a bit. In the upcoming days, uh, considering that it's 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 seemingly coming to like a final, um, like the 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 final moment. Uh, like, I, I don't know. It just it, it feels as though it feels as though this is a great escalation of tensions in general. Every time there's like new information about any of the hostages that have been killed, um, obviously it's like the final straw. Uh, it seems, but we'll see. You know they call them terrorists in Nukba, unironically. Like what the fuck is going on? Do you think the Israeli opposition was contacted by the U.S. to spark this end? No, dude. First of all, Israeli in the U.S. is like this, okay? America would not fuck up the bag for Israel because they could have a much easier chance of, like, making sure that uh, the situation is resolved in an amicable fashion by pushing for a fucking ceasefire. You know what I mean? Like, they already have that. And they're not even using that. America is literally aligned with Benjamin Netanyahu. America's own guy in the cabinet quit. America's own guy in the cabinet literally fucking quit. They tried to like push and pull in some ways. And they genuinely failed to do so by like, um, by, by having their guy, Benny Gans, leave the fucking cabinet unceremoniously. So they're, they're doing all the worst shit. Letting Israel... Um, letting Israel do whatever the fuck it wants, letting the Israeli war cabinet and the Israeli government do whatever the fuck it wants is the perhaps the worst possible thing you can do. Okay? So that's the situation. U.S. officials once again give cover to Netanyahu. Meanwhile, in Israel, everyone is blaming Netanyahu. I know. Once again, the United States of America's uh, uh, response to the situation 
is in clear contrast of the Israeli public's response to the situation. If you recall, I said this early October. Remember, we post the posters of the kidnapped, the hostages, for a very different propaganda purpose here in the United States of America as opposed to in Israel. It is the Likudniks that were taking down the fucking hostage posters in Israel because the hostage families were like, our, our people are there. Our family members are there. Our cherished loved ones are in Gaza. Stop bombing. Get a fucking ceasefire, which the Israeli government was obviously, for the past 11 months, allergic to, right? In America, however, the hostage posters were used as an offensive propaganda to be like, yeah, no, this is why we have to, this is why Israel has to keep fucking bombing Gaza, ironically, killing fucking the family members. So, of course, that attitude has still remained. That attitude has still remained uh, in, in Israel in terms of like hostage families and the way that they have been treated by the government, the way that they have made their demands known to the government versus Western media completely outflanking and dick riding the most ridiculous uh, Likudnik party line here in the Western world. It is crazy. This does not mean that those hostage family protesters are actually super woke and anti-Zionist by any measure. I'm not saying that at all. Many of them probably still want the continuation of death and destruction in Gaza, but they also understand that those bombs are falling on their family members. They also understand that Benjamin Netanyahu's reluctance to come to a, an agreement with a ceasefire proposal in a hostage negotiation is probably killing their family members. So you have to remember that, okay? You have to remember that when we analyze the situation. The attitude in Israel is very different than the attitude in the United States of America due to the closeness that many people feel in terms of like their loved ones being uh, uh, still stuck in Gaza, okay? Israeli military says it recovered the bodies of six hostages from an underground tunnel in Gaza on Saturday. The IDF has identified all six bodies, which include Israeli-American Hirsch Goldberg Poland. The Israeli defense... So Hirsch Goldberg Poland is um, the, the Israeli-American whose family members spoke at the fucking DNC, okay? His family members, his mom and dad, are the people that spoke at the DNC, if you remember. So this obviously, this obviously is, is uh, more personal for a lot of other people. The defense minister said the hostages were killed just before troops could reach them. According to the initial assessment at our disposal, they were brutally murdered by Hamas terrorists a short while before we reached them. They were abducted alive on the morning of October 7th by the Hamas terror organization. Hamas is blaming Israel for the deaths. A Hamas spokesman said the hostages were killed That's by crazy. Israel's bombing. Whoa, whoa. It's not crazy that Hamas is saying like the bombs obviously killed them. What the fuck are you guys talking about? But it's crazy that they're showing the Hamas statement in Western media. That is wild. Whoa, this is new. Chat. This is, in the past 11 months of ongoing genocide, this is one of the first times where I have heard Western mainstream fucking media openly state this is Hamas's position and it is at odds with Israel. That is crazy. I got fucking goosebumps, dude. That is crazy. I've never actually seen uh, uh, any kind of autonomy or sovereignty or any kind of like uh, individual attitude from from the side of terrorist barbarians, uh, which is the way that they are depicted usually, that is a wild change of pace. By the Hamas terror organization. Hamas we got to keep pushing. It's the only way we will see any change, and you are part of this too, man. I know. This is blaming Israel for the deaths. A Hamas spokesman said the hostages were killed by Israel's bombing of Gaza without giving specifics. Now, a group representing the families of Israeli hostages is calling for Prime Minister Netanyahu to address the nation and, quote, take responsibility for abandoning the hostages. Netanyahu released a tape statement this morning blaming Hamas for the murders of the hostages and accused them of not wanting a ceasefire deal. CNN's Nick Robertson joining us now live from Jerusalem with more. Uh, Nick, you're also learning some information about these hostages that some of them were actually slated for release before their bodies were found. 
Yeah, Hirsch Goberg, Poland, uh, and Aiden Yerushalmi, and... Uh... As an Israeli, I've had zero hope, but this general strike is the genuine end of this genocide. The strike is total and inevitable. What's interesting about the general strike is that there's a couple different things. So Israel, um, and I'm sure the Israelis in the chat know this already, but Israel's economy is in the shitter, right? It is fucking uh, screaming bloody murder. That's number one. Number two, Israeli interior security is at an all-time low as a direct consequence of the offensive campaign that they're not only conducting in Gaza, but the offensive campaign that they're conducting in the West Bank. So they don't even have enough, in my opinion, and I don't know, and uh, I don't know how they will be able to deal with this, but they don't have enough fucking like they don't have adequate coverage if there is a massive, massive general strike that occurs in Israel. So like they won't even be able to fucking bust out the, the APCs and shit that they've used in the Supreme Court uh, protest that happened um, in the Supreme Court protest that happened a, a couple years prior. So like it's gotten to a point where it does genuinely feel like a change might occur uh, like it does genuinely feel like a change might happen yeah money is dried up israeli startups are folding one after another you know there there is the israeli economy was downgraded again a couple like a month ago and not only that but also you got one port that is completely bankrupt you're like you have the embargo from turkey that has like actually shut off some consumer goods to israel like these are genuine changes that are happening in Israeli society that otherwise has been uh, used to these uh, comforts that you get from being the vassal state, uh, the unsinkable aircraft carrier of the United States of America. Like it is, uh, it is a, by definition, a part of the Imperial core, right? Like the way that people have designed their lives, the way that people are accustomed to certain things will create a genuine point of pressure, right? And I think that pressure is going to keep mounting, and we will see. Did you see this going on almost a whole year? Uh, yes, I did. I, I, looking at, once the bear hug happened, I was like, this is going to continue for as long as, uh, as long as Benjamin Netanyahu wishes it. If anything, I'm shocked that uh, there's this much protest happening against the Netanyahu government right now. It's been an entire fucking, it's been an entire year of this bloodshed. It's been an entire year of this fucking death and destruction. And um, in that time frame, Benjamin Netanyahu's popularity went from deeply unpopular to actually uh, uh, solidly popular once again. So that's something that you need to pay attention to. I'm an Israeli chatter, but don't know where to send the vids and protests and shit also high. Israeli chatter here. I don't know where to post protest vids today or tomorrow. People are gearing up here really hard in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem, so it's going to be huge. Also high. Yeah. I have, alongside many others, like Ilan Pape, who is obviously much smarter than myself, made that same sentiment before that, like, the contradictions are becoming far too glaring. Um, contradictions are becoming, are becoming far too glaring for... Uh, this this uh, Zionist regime to continue its apartheid, to continue its genocide, and that it will inevitably be the end. It might take many, many years. It might take decades. It might take fucking weeks. But uh, Israel's own actions, its own vendetta, its own bloodshed that it has caused has not only made it internationally a pariah state, but it is there is a cost to this. There's a cost that you incur when you engage on this uh, sort of endeavor. OK, and the smaller you are as a nation, the more reliant you are to outside help as a nation, the shorter time frame you have to continue waging war like this. OK, that's why I've said like something legitimately shifted in both these societal attitudes in Israel after October 7. But something but I think it, it basically kickstarted the the inevitable downfall of of zionism and uh more importantly of course the the apartheid that israel will now uh try to redirect back to to try and defend itself it was already a pariah state before the genocide the difference is that americans are starting to see that way too no that's a huge difference though like 
the Western world as a whole recognizing Israel for what it is, is entirely different. Because when Western populations start recognizing Israel as a pariah state, because the globe had already seen what Israel was doing, because they had experienced what Israel was doing in different ways throughout their own historical development. But I'm talking about the Western core, the core countries, the NATO nations, the nations within uh, the European Union, like the the West European, uh, Western European nations, like once their populations started recognizing this, okay, and this has been um, this has been happening since uh, 2021, I would say, but especially uh, in the last 10 months, once they started recognizing what the fuck was going on, that creates another pressure point internally in their domestic affairs for a lot of these countries. If the broad majorities of your public recognize that this is completely indecent, this is untenable, and yet you are still um, portraying a completely false narrative inside of your bubble, that puts you at odds with popular mobilization on the ground. And that is... A, a genuine issue because this isn't Saudi Arabia. This isn't fucking Jordan, right? You can't apply that level of restriction upon your population. And you notice that in, even in the Abraham Accords nations, what their response has been post-October 7 is still very managed. Why is it very managed? Despite the fact that they still want weapons contracts from America and they still want to do trade with Israel. Because even they recognize despite the fact that they obviously have a shit ton more restriction, uh, restrictive attitudes at their disposal, that their public is absolutely at odds with the, the way that they want to continue their foreign policy. You know? This may sound dumb, but I realized Israel was fucked up when I saw World War Z for the first time. That seems insane. You know, this counts as a big deal if the U.S. media is covering it and sharing Hamas statements, as you said. That's the barometer for big deal if it catches U.S. media cycle. Exactly. The... For all of the, the, the talk that always occurs around nothing ever happens, things are always happening. It's just that nothing ever happens is a very Western chauvinist attitude, right? This is something that I have talked about quite a bit. There is this meme, for those of you who don't know, online of nothing ever happens, okay? The end of history. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, Francis Fukuyama who originally said, like, it's over, it's done. Uh, Post-Cold War, end of history. History will never, uh, you know, the... the the trajectory of our lives is never going to dramatically change. Now, of course, obviously, things are happening all the fucking time. It's just that in the West, nothing ever happens means nothing happens to me. Okay? Nothing ever happens to me. Things are not disrupted in my life. Right? That's what that means. That's what the nothing ever happens crowd is actually saying. And this, or at least... This CNN referring to Hamas statements being at odds with the Israeli government is a change in trajectory. It's a change in the way that American media is covering this issue. That's something happening. That's something happening that even the nothing ever happens crowd recognizes. Okay. So this is a big fucking deal. Okay. This is a big fucking deal. Zionism will be hard to overcome in Germany. We're not talking about Germany. Germany is in an entirely different fucking uh, world of its own. I don't even want to get into Germany. Um, I, I, I'm disgusted with uh, everything that I've seen. I saw an anti-Semitism report from Germany on TikTok where the TikToker went through like each individual things, each individual incidents that were considered anti-Semitic. And it was, it was so disgusting, dude. It was so disgusting. There's like fucking people attacking a synagogue, which is a real anti-Semitic crime, right? Alongside, listed alongside with the same level of severity as someone getting together at a gathering and saying the International Court of Justice's own position, like reiterating the position that Israel is currently occupying Palestinian territory and it must immediately stop its occupation that was considered an anti-semitic incident mentioned alongside like fucking attacking a synagogue so you're putting neo-nazis and in often instances protests led by german jews in the same fucking category you are out of your goddamn mind okay you're out of your fucking mind i don't even want to talk about germany i don't want to even 
think about Germany, Germany, I'm done with it. Okay, I'm fucking done with Germany. Ridiculous. Yeah. Germany can't even fucking on accident be on the right side of history. It's ridiculous. Amal Gat were all slated to be released in the first phase under sort of humanitarian grounds, the first phase of release. Hirsch had become I'm gonna go a, pee real. a sort of a, a symbol, an international symbol, if you will, for for the hostages, not just because of the brutal pictures that everyone saw when he was when he was captured, uh, he'd lost his left arm, uh, and the narrative that we learned after his capture that he, that had happened as he was trying to sort of defend and fend off hand grenades and gunshots from Hamas, but then Hamas cynically and brutally used him in a propaganda uh, hostage video in April this year, where you could clearly see he had lost his left arm. Everyone in this country and I think around the world could really see what was happening to what was happening to the hostages and how they were being used. But these three um, were expected to be in the first phase of relief release. Uh, there are huge political recriminations, not just from the family of the hostages, not just even from opposition uh, politicians here, but also even the defense minister calling on the prime minister to revisit the cabinet vote last week that many people believed shut down the possibility of getting a hostage deal through. The prime minister has given a statement and he's defended his position and is blaming Hamas for what's happening. In recent days, as Israel has been holding intensive negotiations with a mediator in a supreme effort to reach a deal, Hamas is continuing to steadfastly refuse all proposals. Even worse, at the exact same time, it murdered six of our hostages. Whoever murders hostages does not want a deal. For our part, we will not relent. The government of Israel is committed, and I am personally committed, to continue striving towards a deal that will return all our hostages and ensure our security and our ex He's not wrong. He's not wrong. People who murder hostages don't want to do a deal. People who murder the hostage negotiator don't want a deal. It's just that both of those things are happening, uh, and Israel is doing them. So, you know something to consider when he says oh people that fucking murder hostages or people that murder the hostage negotiator for example they probably are not invested in a fucking deal are they you can't continue this charade okay especially when people literally fucking are like dude dude there's a hostage deal you're supposed to get it done you're supposed to get it done you're supposed to get this fucking hostage deal done um and and uh their family members are on the other side you know like you guys are saying shooting aid workers or shooting, uh, uh, you know, random uh, Palestinian children, like people that don't give a fuck about that. Okay. Israeli society members who don't give a fuck about that still care about their family members. Okay. You need to understand that. You need to understand that people who literally think like, oh, it's not a genocide. It's an offensive campaign that we have to do whatever are still like, dude, get the deal done. Get the fucking ceasefire done. You piece of shit. My family members are there. My friends are there. Okay? Do you understand? Do you get it? Like, this is very, very important to recognize. Okay? Very important to recognize. Because he, the real does Hamas want a deal? Of course Hamas wants a deal. Come on, dude. How many, how many months have we covered this? Of course they want a deal. And the deal has been basically on the fucking table for 10 months. Here. It, like... Listen to Israeli hostage negotiators. We later found out that Hamas had offered on October 9 or 10 the release of all civilian hostages in exchange for the idea of not entering the strip, but the government rejected the offer. Okay? The Israeli government spokesman says war will continue even if all hostages are released. This war has to end with the end of Hamas, Elon Levy told the BBC. Okay? Do you understand? Yeah, there's also there's also internal documents that came out uh, from Dropsite News, which we will cover in a second. We'll get to that. Hamas had already accepted the U.S. deal, by the way. Hamas says it accepts Biden's ceasefire deal without new Israeli conditions. That was a couple days ago. Hamas, there is a deal on the table. America presented it months ago. The United Nations voted for the deal, okay? Everyone wants that deal. The problem is Israel does not want the deal. And it's not even Israeli society. The only people... 
that don't recognize what is going on are people who unfortunately live in the United States of America and are fucking deluded by our media and Anthony Blinken and the administration regularly fucking lying. Okay? That's why for months I've been saying over and over again, there's a deal on the table. Israel is the only one that's spoiling this deal. All the way up until like Israel literally fucking killed the principal negotiator, which even then, which even then people looked at and, and thought, oh, well, he's a Hamas guy, so who gives a shit? You are not above propaganda, okay? You are, you are still incredibly susceptible to propaganda. It is understandably not something that you pay attention to. You don't have this expectation that mainstream media is going to have a set of biased narratives that they go with that completely go against the reality on the fucking ground, okay? You don't have that expectation, so you rely on mainstream media. It is understandable to rely on mainstream media. I still rely on mainstream media very much so. But you have to understand that when it comes to American foreign policy, especially in the way that American foreign policy uh, analyzes Israel or currently sees Israel as an incredibly valuable ally that no matter how hard they go, they will still defend, okay? Um, I don't blame you for, for, you know, reading a CNN article or two and then having a, a very different reality, like having a, a false understanding of what's going on, because there is a shit ton of misinformation out there that is presented as like genuine truths, even though it doesn't fucking make any sense whatsoever. Okay. You don't have this expectation that the state department officials are going to come out and be like. No, it's Hamas ruining the fucking deal. I, I promise you, right? Um, and then have that be the exact opposite of reality. Why the fuck would you ever expect that? These are people in positions of power, and there's an expectation that they're going to be truthful. They're not. They're just simply not. And Israel is doing everything it can in its fucking power to... Israel's doing everything it can in its fucking power to basically show you that that's not the reality, that they are the spoilers. Listen to Benjamin Netanyahu. He regularly says, yeah, no deal, no deal, no deal. We're not fucking pulling the troops out of the Philadelphia corridor. No deal. We're going to add new conditions onto the fucking pre-existing hostage negotiation in an effort to fucking keep the hostage negotiation out there, dangle it like a fucking carrot, um, and, and continue pummeling Gaza as they have. And America plays along with it. Okay. Look at this reality from the Times of Israel. Hostage families say hostages would still be alive if it weren't for the saboteurs, the excuses, and the spin. On CNN, Blinken says Israel has agreed the U.S. proposal to close remaining gaps on ceasefire deal and calls on Hamas to do the same. I don't think you understand. Like, like Israeli news is, is outflanking American news on this issue in perpetuity. Okay? These are not outlets that are fucking anti-Zionist. The Times of Israel is not an anti-Zionist institution. Even Haaretz, which does have anti-Zionist writers every now and then, but, you know, has a variety of different perspectives. Ynet, Channel 12, Khan. There are, with the exception of, like, the BB Dick writer uh, channels, many of these outlets are writing truthfully about the situation, about the frustrations that Israeli society has. Okay. American media does not have to do that because they are far removed from the reality on the ground. So they can work to manufacture consent at the behest of the American State Department. This is a good take as well. Israeli media doesn't need to do this dance because Israeli society is fine with the colonial situation in general. That too, for sure. What is the most powerful anti-Zionist source in Israel? 972 Magazine and Local Call are two phenomenal investigative reporter outlets that have uncovered so many of the stories that you hear months later from like Western news sources like The Guardian. Okay. Plus 972 magazine and local call are two phenomenal institutions of journalism inside of Israel. They do incredible work. Local call. Okay. They're great. They're great. Um, anyway, even Haaretz is more critical in Israel than most Western outlets. Yes. Haaretz is seen as like a leftist, uh, you know, liberal newspaper even though they do still have very much like Zionists at pay on their payroll who like write insane articles every now and then also not journalists, but Betselem. Yes. Betselem is a Israeli human rights group. They're phenomenal as well. But, um, 
What is this? Don't you think Hamas has also made a lot of allegations and is not doing any good to Palestinians regardless of them saying they want to cease fire in pro-Palestine, by the way? What do you mean? Hamas has made a lot of allegations and is not doing good to Palestinians. What are we talking about here? What? I'm pro-Palestine, by the way. I'm confused as to what you're trying to say. I, I genuinely don't understand it. Haaretz also has Gideon Livy, who is a Sigma male. Yeah, Gideon is great. Uh, follow Palestinians and anti-Zionists is really like BM. I really hate you for accurate Palestine news. Yeah, that's another one. Hamas is a resistance group uh, against the Israeli apartheid. I don't know what you're trying to say, though. Like, what allegations has Hamas made? So let's take a look at how this fucking Satan spawn right here is uh, reacting. Existence. But, but I think I should also just give you a sense of some of the heartbreak that the families are feeling. The cousin of uh, Carmel Gatt, who was visiting her family in the nearby to the Nova Music Festival, Kibbutz Bari. She was 40 years old. She was an occupational therapist. Hamas is a fascist group. Oops, I didn't mean to ban you, but I mean, what you said is ridiculous regardless. Hamas is not a fucking fascist group, brother. What the fuck are you talking about? The fuck? He said Hamas is a fascist group who killed all the lefties in Palestine. You're just wrong. Literally wrong. You know who has, you know who has been responsible for more Palestinian leftists being fucking butchered, slaughtered, tortured? Fatah. Okay? The Palestinian Authority. Hamas, on the other hand, is a resistance group that is the leading resistance group that has collaborated with all of the rest of the Palestinian resistance groups, which include PFLP and DFLP. So you're absolutely wrong about that. Okay. And some of their demands are literally releasing high level Palestinian hostages currently under Israeli detention that will literally actually write them out of civil governance. Okay. The people that they want to release from DFLP, PFLP, and even Fatah at times are actually more popular leaders that are directly at odds with their political ambitions and will absolutely, obviously I'm talking about Marwan Barghouti, which Marwan Barghouti is, is if released, which is one of the highest uh, priority targets that Hamas uh, demands the release of, okay? Marvan Barghouti will most likely completely write out uh, Hamas from, from ever having a civil governance if he is released. And they still want to release them. They are, there are aspects of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad and Hamas that are Islamist fundamentalists. This much is true. But ultimately, Islamism is not the reason why they are resisting. They are resisting, and it's not anti-Semitism either. They're resisting because there is an apartheid. They're the only game in town. Okay. They're the only fucking um, developed enough group that has the means, the necessary resources, and the momentum to actually fight back against Israel's brutal, cruel regime. Okay? I'm scared, guys. Wait, I think Hamas is different than any other jihadi groups, in my opinion. Hamas is not a jihadi group. What are you talking about? Jihadi group? What do you mean jihad? If you, like, Americans think, like, Salafist, like, ISIS uh, is, is jihad. It's not. Jihad just means struggle, resistance, or not resistance, but, like, it means struggle. It could be going to the gym is jihad, if that's what you're, you're not using the correct interpretation. But if I were to, uh, if I were to, to uh, lean into your interpretation of the term jihad, which is just a fucking nine, post 9-11 buzzword, okay? Jihad is not a bad thing, um... But in American media, it is represented as like what ISIS is doing, which is not jihad. Okay. Hamas is not uh, even remotely close to ISIS or any of those other Salafist groups. As a matter of fact, they're at odds with a lot of those Salafist groups. I'm not American. Jihad is an Arabic word for Islamic. I'm not American. Jihad is an Arabic word for Islamic conquership. Motherfucker said, I'm not American. I'm just a racist. <laughs> He's like, I'm not American. I'm just a Euro fascist. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, let me tell you. Yeah. Jihad means struggle or effort. Exactly. No, but he going to the gym is jihad. Lol. Everyone knows what jihad is. Stop equivocating. It literally. What is happening right now? I'm saying even your false Islamophobic understanding of jihad, where you're using that as a substitute word for like doing terrorism or whatever in like ISIS style uh, activities, okay, which is incorrect. I'm one, correcting the common misconception that people have. And then two, leaning into the common misconception that people have. I'm Muslim Arab law. Okay, sure, bud.
I'm Muslim Arab. I'm Muslim Arab. We are trying to conquer Europe by doing jihad. I'm Muslim Arab. And I'm here to I'm here to to do jihad by raping white women in Sweden. That's my jihad. That's what we mean when we say jihad. Islamic conquership. We want to implement the caliphate in Berlin. Like, like I don't speak Arabic, okay? But that's what like that's what it means in Arabic, okay? I don't know why the fuck like, dude. I need you guys to understand something, okay? Narratives and perception oftentimes is significantly more popular and, and more important than the actual reality. This is why in the Western world, I can have a conversation with someone who says, I'm pro-Palestine, I'm an Arab Muslim, and jihad means Islamic conquership. And there are a shit ton of people who literally believe that when it's simply not the fucking truth, okay? And it's crazy to me. It is crazy to me that like, like, I can't even address a common misconception that people have without people being like, no, you're wrong, actually. It just means like blowing up uh, places, okay? Word in and of itself means something entirely different than the way it's presented in the Western world. But even if you were to operate on that understanding, what Hamas is doing is not that, okay? But it's crazy to me overall that uh it's crazy to me overall that like people will unironically run with this narrative yeah i mean the wikipedia are, the the wikipedia itself you could just like google it is an arabic word which literally means exerting striving or struggling especially with a praiseworthy aim in an islamic context it can refer to almost any effort to make personal or social life conform with god's guidance such as internal struggle against evil in oneself efforts to build a good muslim community ummah and struggle to defend Islam. In non-Muslim societies, the term is often associated with offensive warfare and violence. That's why, like I said, going to the gym could be jihad. But that sounds silly when like everyone is primed to think, oh, it means saying Allahu Akbar, which also means God is great. But from an American standpoint, from a Western standpoint, it means scary guy about to go boom, boom, because you're fucking racist. I don't know how else to describe it to you. <laughs> Like, you are just a racist person, and I am over here trying to explain to you a concept that is not true, but you don't give a fuck. Anyway, which is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy that, like, this is a point of contention, even in a community such as this one. Okay? Oh. Anyway, but that's not even what I'm talking about, for the record, because I understand where that chatter was coming from when, when he was using jihad as a substitute word for, like, Salafist terror. Okay? And Hamas is not. Not only are they ideologically at odds with Salafis, okay, okay. Oh my God, dude, we got, we got fucking uh, what's her face? Um, another Aya Hershey. Another uh, what was it? Was it Aya Hershey Ali? Uh, Ayan Hershey Ali type in in the chat. In an Islamic approach, has many rules, such as taking women hostages. If you read the Quran, it always refers to war. Thanks, man or woman. Yeah, no, definitely. You're right. Why am I having this conversation uh, with this fucking pathic demon, dude? Thank you, Chatter, for coming in here and being like, listen, I am a, I'm a Muslim Arab, uh, and jihad means doing terror on white, uh, white children and also capturing white women specifically in war. Okay? I don't, no, it's a good combo to have. A lot of people just learn for the first time what jihad really means. No, because a lot more people who already have this priming to... To believe the false notion will just go along with it and be like this guy unjustifiably got banned in the chat because he's saying the truth as an arab muslim you don't understand you don't understand white boys like i do okay there are plenty of people for as many people who are open-minded and go and are going hmm i didn't know this now i'm learning about it there is a shit ton more people who are like no that guy was speaking the truth and Assam banned him unjustifiably okay trust me this is like when people don't understand the term martyr. I know. In Iran, we have a ministry of agricultural jihad. Does this guy think they're terrorist farmers? Yes. They're terraforming. Terror farming. Like, you will never be able to explain it. Like, there's motherfuckers named jihad, bro. What do you do? Do you think that guy is named jihad? Do you... The term jihad is mentioned in 41 instances in the Quran. Most occurrences are linguistically related to the exer exercise of effort, juht and the deployment of energy on 10 occasions in relation to the path of God on 13 occasions or in the context of combat. Yeah, they're doing terror farming. Anyway, let's get back to this. Yeah, there's dudes named like Jihad. 
I, I suspect that when Americans hear that a dude is named Jihad, they mean like, oh, they, they think like, oh, this is a terrorist who is going to do terror. And that's why he's named doing terrorism to white people. She saw her mother uh, be killed in front of her eyes by Hamas before she was abducted. And her cousin wrote this letter, and I'll just read some of it because it's, it's so poignant and, and, and captivates the sense and the mood and the loss here. He says, sorry, Carmel, sorry we didn't stop it when it was possible. Sorry we let them kill you. I wish you saw and heard, and I wish you even saw with your own eyes and I, uh, that I'm sorry you saw with your own eyes the murder of your mother. I wish you discovered that your father and your brother and your sister-in-law and your niece survived. I wish you saw how your friends fought to bring you alive. I, w I wish you hadn't heard the Prime Minister say that the Philadelphia Corridor, the sticking point in the negotiations, is more important than your life and the lives of the other hostages. I can only imagine... Bro, they're literally writing scathing letters about, like, the, the minutia of Benjamin Netanyahu's, like, holdout positions in, in Israeli society. It's actually shocking that they named the Philadelphia Corridor as a point of contention in this letter. Because that is directly what Benjamin Netanyahu is using as a reason as to why he does not want to fucking do this hostage negotiation and ceasefire proposal, which is crazy that it's on CNN now. I am actually shocked. Of course, it should have never gotten to this, but I'm actually legitimately confused as to what my eyes are seeing, what my ears are hearing from CNN. This is not a thing that I ever would have thought would happen on CNN. And not only that, okay? I love how you hate Israel so much that you don't even mention Hamas. I love the hypocrisy. What hypocrisy? What is the hypocrisy? I am mentioning Hamas. I've talked about Hamas quite extensively on this broadcast for the past 11 months. How the fuck would I avoid talking about Hamas when talking about the situation in Gaza? You are just making up a position in your mind and also ascribing hypocrisy to this position that you made up in your fucking mind. I have not stopped talking about Hamas. I was just talking about Hamas. That chatter said a verbatim post on Twitter I read earlier. This is either a child or someone too stupid to engage with. Yeah. BB is defending his true homeland, Pennsylvania. Now, here's the thing. I love how you hate Israel. Yeah, I mean, that's not... I will always... I will always have uh, hatred in my heart for any government that does uh, this level of unimaginable bloodshed to majority civilian children, women, elderly, just completely unconscionable. Of course. Yeah, I'm Israeli. The whole reason this is happening is because Netanyahu won't engage a deal because he's power greedy. He's he is 100. percent What's next? You hate Rhodesia? Yes. Um, I want to know what that chatter was saying uh, earlier. What, like he's like, you don't even talk about Hamas, which is ridiculous. Of course, I talk about Hamas. Hamas would cease to exist if Israel did not maintain an apartheid regime. Okay, so you hate the Turks for what they did to the Armenians. Great question. Um, if you can find. A moment where I have ever, ever fucking denied the Armenian genocide. I told you, I'll give you, I'll give you 10 grand, okay? And not like a thing that's clipped out of context where I'm in the process of talking about the Armenian genocide where you make it seem like I'm denying it, okay? This is such a funny fucking take from a bunch of dumbasses who literally come in. Norwegian socialist, by the way. Norwegian socialist. I doubt that you're an actual Norwegian socialist. One of the one of the countries that's like actually pretty fucking critical. Your your own investment fund is currently in the process of divesting from Israel, and you're over here being like, um, so you hate the Turks for what they did to the Armenians? What a fucking silly take. You are a racist piece of shit. I know that's good. Oh, suck my dick. Oh, you know that's good. That's like Trump being like, oh, I'm glad that I called in the question Barack Obama's birth certificate. So now we all know that he actually was born in America. You fucking bitch. We know exactly what you're doing. You see a Turkish man, you think, oh, he must deny the Armenian genocide, and you racistly fucking use that shit. You think I don't hear this every fucking day of the week? Hypocrisy baiting assholes who immediately ascribe these fucking ridiculous positions because, oh, he's Turkish. As in Israeli, most Israelis are against keeping the Philadelphia corridor. We all know he's using it to stay in power. If there would be a ceasefire, there would be elections. He will no longer be the PM. I don't even know because I feel like I mean, this last, uh, this last like mass protest, mass mobilization aside, and we are going to cover the Israeli demonstrations. We are in the process of it. Hold on, chatter. Um, 
like his popularity has increased. It was in the shitter post October 7. Many Israelis also were like, bro, you fucked this up. You were the security candidate. You did not give us security at all. It's the least secure we've ever felt, you know? Um, and, and since then, his popularity has only gone up as he continued this fucking thing. What is the Philadelphia Corridor? The Philadelphia Corridor is the southernmost point of uh, the Gaza border crossing that is uh, Rafa, that is like the, the, the corridor between Rafa in the Gaza Strip, the southernmost corridor, uh, and Egypt. And Benjamin Netanyahu overtook it when he invaded, violated, <laughs> violated Joseph Robinette Brandon's uh, uh, red line by invading Rafa, and he even invaded uh, parts of Egyptian land as well, Egyptian territory as well, okay, and took over the entire southern border of the Gaza Strip and Egypt. <sighs> but yeah, I will cover the, the Israeli demonstrations. Um, I'm shocked that, according to polling, Bibi was down bad pre-October 7 and probably would have lost the election due to the Supreme Court reforms after 10-7. His popularity went down even further and has since recovered. Yeah. So the reason why the Netzerim Corridor and the Philadelphia Corridor is a point of contention is because Benjamin Netanyahu is like, we're going to do a ceasefire, okay, a three-phase ceasefire negotiation that the United States of America presented as the Israeli proposal months ago at this point that the United Nations voted on that Hamas has agreed to, okay, multiple times at this point, that is identical to the Hamas proposal that was presented all the way back in February, mind you, okay? Benjamin Netanyahu has added additional conditions to that, which is a permanent occupation of the Philadelphia Corridor and the Netzarim Corridor, which cuts across Gaza and also uh, controls the southern uh, point as well, okay? This is a new point of contention that Benjamin Netanyahu added on as a poison pill to the existing ceasefire proposal that the American leadership has consistently lied and said Israel is actually on board with, okay? In Israel, obviously, Israelis are aware that Benjamin Netanyahu has added this extra uh, position in an effort to poison the actual ceasefire deal. Because, of course, you cannot have a fucking ceasefire and permanent the cessation of hostilities without fucking actually removing troops, okay? So the people who are closest to the matter are obviously more privy to the information and more uh, aware of what the fuck is actually going on as opposed to people in the Western world that are deluded by mainstream media into thinking that the situation is very different and it's actually Hamas that's playing the role of the spoiler here, okay? Here, Israel's plans to stay in Gaza... Following are some revealing quotes from a column by Netanyahu's mouthpiece, Amit Segal. The prime minister is not telling the truth. The truth is this. As far as Netanyahu is concerned, Israel plans to stay in Gaza for the next generation. We are now returning to another old experiment conducted between 1967 and 2005, military bases between Gaza and Rafah. This is exactly the presence Netanyahu means when he talks about Israeli military control and civilian control of other parties. That's why a two-lane freeway is currently being paved on the Philadelphia axis. And that's why entire divisions are located where Rafia Yam, Netzarim, Eli Sine, Nisanit, and Dugit, Israeli dismantled Gaza settlements, once were. This does not mean that there will be no deal. It can be carried out as a pause, a temporary withdrawal. But the negotiations only emphasize how much Israel opposes a total withdrawal from the Strip. Okay? There remains the question of ruling over 2 million Palestinians. Another possibility is that there will be less than 2 million. A crossing to Rafah will open and allow emigration from Gaza by sea or by air. Several sources indicate a great desire to leave. Rest assured, Gush Katif will not return. It is more likely that a more sympathetic American administration would perhaps tacitly agree to the establishment of Nahal outposts on the northern perimeter near Ashkelon. Ministers are pressuring Netanyahu to order a total evacuation of Gaza City from its last 100 to 200,000 inhabitants. The security justification is the removal of the threat to the Netzarim Corridor. The real justification is the shock and despair that this will sow. It's funny that it seems the media here in Israel is more anti-Israel than the media over there in America. No, the media in Israel has to, to a certain degree, accurately cover what the fuck is going on. Okay? Israelis are closer to the situation they are not as oblivious as Americans are. This does not mean that these outlets are anti-Zionist by any means. There's two different reasons. One, because the, the Israeli society's attitude towards the IDF and towards, like, you know, death and destruction in Gaza is, I hate to, uh, you know, there are Israeli chatters in here, I'm sure they will agree with me, a little bit different than the Western world's attitudes. 
They're closer to the problem. They're closer to feeling some type of way. Okay. And, and for that reason, they are already primed with total death and destruction. Not the entirety of society, but plenty, like broad majorities of uh, the, the Jewish citizens of Israel, especially. Okay, which comprise obviously the overwhelming two thirds majority of Israeli society are fully primed and invested, dare I say, in the death and destruction of Palestinians, or at the very least, can turn a blind eye to that death and destruction. Um, Israeli media also rarely ever covers the atrocities that are ongoing in Gaza for a specific reason, continuing the manufacturing of consent in Israel for. Benjamin Netanyahu's quote-unquote war, it's his offensive siege. Having said that, however, there is obviously a closeness to the situation in terms of like having Israeli citizens that are still being held captive in Gaza, and therefore they can't go, uh, they can't go in the same, same propaganda direction that like Americans can. American media can do that because there isn't that same level of closeness. This is something that I brought up pretty early on. This is something that I brought up pretty early on when we talked about the hostage posters and the role that it plays in Israel versus the exact opposite role that it plays in America. Hostage posters were placed in the United States of America all around big cities with the effort to continue to say, like, look, this is why we're fucking blowing up Gaza. This is why they deserve it. Whereas in Israel, hostage posters were being ripped up by Likudniks, Bibists, because they were seen as, like, a hurdle, a nuisance, a spoiler to Benjamin Netanyahu's like bountiful claims to Gaza and whatever he wanted to do. For Americans, this is in the background. In Israel, is the foremost issue. Exactly. If Israeli media accurately represents the situation, what is the Western media's motivation for not accurately reporting? Um, old habits die hard. Uh, America, uh, the American State Department interest, as it stands, it is being guided by habit ultra Zionist. Okay, like at the top level, at the highest level, you got Blinken and you got Biden. Those and you have Kirby. Those guys are some of the most ideological ultra Zionist zealots you have ever encountered. Okay, straight up. Like I would say Biden being the most rabid. Okay, Biden is one of the most rabid ultra Zionists you have ever encountered in American politics. Okay. What is this? Remember me, June 11th, 2024? I don't think so. What did you get banned or something? And you came up with a new article? I mean, a new account? For that reason, Western media, which uh, obviously, if they covered this situation accurately, would develop unimaginable anti-Israel sentiments in, what, in the Western world. Think about the anti-Israel sentiment that exists in the Western world right now, in spite of the broad media coverage defending Israel. Okay, think about that. Now imagine if the media was accurately reporting the story. A lot of you already come here and hear what is actually happening and develop this attitude. There would be a lot more people who have that exact same attitude that you have. This would put America at odds with the State Department. Okay, this would put this would create even broader popular sentiment in the United States of America in terms of a, a push, a real push for a ceasefire, and maybe even the dissolution of the apartheid. Obviously, the media has two different roles. One, to accurately portray them, to accurately portray the truth, but also maintain a like a shred of legitimacy so they can, you know, next time they cover something important and they have to lie to you, you have to believe them. The other responsibility that they have is to obviously toe the line and play a role in defending America's strategic interests in the globe. That is the issue here. That's why sometimes they will actually uh, seep in accurate coverage of what's going on. Like when Clarissa Ward snuck into Gaza with the Qatari, uh, with the Qatari uh, healthcare workers to, uh, to offer some of the only insights that we've seen in Western media at the time from inside of a fucking Gaza field hospital. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but Israel is essentially going to be bork tomorrow due to the mass protest. The hostage families are called to not open any schools and close a lot of public facilities. If only someone could protest and close the segue at the top of the hour ad break. Jesus Christ. This motherfucker is... I, I th you're, aren't you literally in Israel, bro? That's fucked up. That's like time without an ovo coming in here to fucking hit me with the top of the hour ad break debate. That's crazy. If you are a known Israeli chatter in here, 
you can't be fucking using that. You can't be using that that additional additional influence for evil like this. That's crazy. That's crazy. He also actually correctly talked about this thing that is going on. God damn. Fuck me. Holy shit. Okay. Well, uh, I got got. At the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. I got cooked. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can for $6 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Okay. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Yeah. Gag, do I fear? Yeah. Don't fear. I did get gagged. Okay. I did. Here's the three minute ad break now. Debated with factual information is wild. Yeah. From like directly on the ground factual information in real time. We'll talk about the strike in uh, the national strike that has been called in Israel in a second. Let's continue. How much rage that must have filled you with. Uh, these are such poignant words. And, and of course, these are words that we're going to hear from so many family members who are absolutely devastated with the loss and the sense that not just the first three, but all of these six could have been released through negotiations, through a ceasefire deal. So heart-wrenching um, to hear. Nick Robertson, thank you very much. The families of the killed hostages are speaking out this morning after hearing the news of their loved ones. The family of Hirsch Goldberg Poland said in a statement with broken hearts, the Goldberg Poland family is devastated to Tiny announce pancake. the death thank of you their for the beloved son and brother Hirsch. The family thanks you all for your love and support and ask for privacy at this time. Elliot Gotkin joins us now. Uh, Elliot, we, uh, most of us remember seeing uh, his parents there at the DNC just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it is. The, the um, Goldberg family is a DN the family that spoke at the DNC. Telling him, if you are they're, watching... They're American Israelis, okay? And their son is also an American citizen, as well as an Israeli citizen. If you are listening, survive. Oh. And now this news. What else can you tell us about these hostages? Victor, yeah. How could... How could the American government be so fucking stupid? How could the Kamala campaign be so fucking unimaginably stupid, dude? Like, you think this shit wasn't going to happen? Are you fucking delusional? Are you dumb? Like, are you that fucking dumb, really? I'm an idiot. I've said it for months at this point. It's like leaving this up as an untied as an untied unresolved situation and that unresolved situation is literally genocide but even if you don't give a fuck about brown people being killed like you think that there aren't going to be more fucking humanitarian aid workers that get killed for example white ones too as a matter of fact like it's gonna happen it is inevitable you think this shit is not going to move the needle again just because it's brat summer for like three fucking weeks you think that it was going to be brat summer and then brat autumn you think vibes would be able to enjoy would be able to carry the Democratic Party across the finish line without this becoming a fucking major issue again? I don't understand it. Yeah, new ABC poll came out today. Who would handle Israel Hamas better? 33% say Harris, 40% say Trump. What did I tell you? The more Harris comes out and ties herself to Biden, the more the American population will fucking broadly associate her with the unpopular policies of Brandon and will literally fucking uh, will keep falsely thinking that Donald Trump is going to be better on this issue. And it's not an issue that you want to be the top priority. OK, you're already getting you're already getting destroyed on immigration. This is why those poll results are slanted in the opposite direction. OK, she had an opportunity and momentum to cut against the Biden campaign on this front. It's not that long ago where a similar situation took place within the Democratic Party with LBJ. It is so fucking frustrating. It is so frustrating. I've been screaming from the goddamn rooftops about this for months at this point, even before Biden, uh, uh, even before Biden dropped out and certainly after Biden dropped out. Why do you think she's doing it? Because she's a blank slate and also a... a fearful politician she is leading by fear okay she's running a fearful campaign she's running scared just like democrats usually do yes um you know very uh, poignant that his parents uh, were so vocal um, and visible 
in their advocacy for the release, not just of their son, Hirsch, but also for all of the hostages. As you say, they spoke at the Democratic National Convention uh, and indeed joined uh, or got the audience all to in, unis in unison uh, chant, you know, bring them home, bring them home, which has become a refrain for the uh, families of hostages who were kidnapped in the uh, Hamas-led terrorist attacks of October the 7th. The parents had met with President Joe Biden as well. And of course, uh, you know, if anyone can remember those uh, searing images from October the 7th, one of the ones that sticks in the mind most was that of Hirsch uh, with half of his left arm blown off, uh, being herded onto the back of a truck and being taken into Gaza. Now, we have a first-hand account from one of his friends from that day saying that they had taken refuge in a small bomb shelter as they were trying to flee from the onslaught and that as the, the militants were throwing hand grenades into this bomb shelter that her throwing them out and it was in the course of throwing those grenades out of the bomb shelter to protect himself and of course the others who were in there uh, that he suffered that injury and that stump was visible again when he was used in that propaganda video back in april that nick was just referring so israel bomb the hostage dev we don't know i don't know i don't know if uh they uh, executed the hostages when israel went in to retrieve them or if they uh, died under the rubble from Israeli bombs. The higher likelihood is still obviously dying to Israeli airstrikes, considering that uh, Israeli airstrikes have, have been responsible for the overwhelming majority of the deaths. But this time it might be different. It might have been, it might have been that, uh, that they, they knew that an extraction, uh, they knew that an extraction was uh, slated to happen and they killed them. And I think that's what the reporting is suggesting as well, that uh, Hamas uh, shot them when uh, they knew that they had no other uh, alternative. Has Israel ever released the cause of death for hostages in a trustworthy format? No, I don't, I don't, I, I not necessarily because they, but they do still have a responsibility to um, portray the truth. Like there is obviously a level of propaganda that they want to do, but usually these are Israeli civilians or Israeli soldiers and their family members like will demand to know what the truth is. So um, they don't broadly publicize it. They don't broadly publicize exactly how some of the hostages die, but like family members will literally come out and be like, they died under rock of fire. Now, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if this is one of those instances. Um, Daniel Hagari uh, said Daniel Hagari said they died a short time before they got there if I recall correctly major respect for holding off on complete confirmation solidify my trust in you yet again yeah um despite what the naysayers in my vicinity say um yeah it's it's not except for the three of those that they accidentally shot well they didn't accidentally shoot them they shot them point blank um they did shoot uh, Israeli the Israeli soldiers did shoot three hostages point blank they were escaping but um this article came out immediately after the announcement. Must make it 100 times more devastating. It was right there. No, but come on. Do you want them to release the autopsy? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they, like, actually give the... I, I suspect that they probably tell the family the truth in terms of, like, how they were actually died. Um, uh, like, whether the Israeli government was responsible with the airstrikes and whatnot. Ultimately, though, I think the um, the Israeli society still broadly considers uh, these last six hostages, even if Hamas killed them, to still be a, a um, responsibility of Israel, considering that there has been an active hostage. Uh, there has been. There has been. You clearly don't know what point blank means. No, they did. The Israeli fucking soldiers did point blank shoot the fucking hostages. What are you talking about? Three of them. Like they had clear aim. What the fuck? It doesn't get more point blank than that. What do you mean? One of the three ran into a... One was holding a white flag. He ran into another house. They they chased him into the house and shot him. Point blank means directly next to... Yeah, they... Yes, up close, dude. Yes. These aren't the six hostages that we're talking about. I'm talking about three. Like from a while back. Three hostages managed to escape. Three hostages managed to escape. They were fucking calling for help in Hebrew. One of them had a fucking white flag. Anyway, then why did the IDF shoot them? What do you mean, brother? First of all, this question is ridiculous because it's, it's something that happened. Okay? That's number one. It's literally something that happened, and you're like, well, why would it have happened this way? As in, like, 
Oh, did it not happen? No, it did. Okay. Whether you like to admit it or not, it literally fucking happened. So that's number one. Make no mistake. Close range would be more accurate than point blank, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Close range. Not like directly fucking put a gun to his head and, and popped him. I'm just asking to know, brother, relax. I'm Palestinian myself. Okay. Why? If you're Palestinian, you know the fucking answer better than anybody else. Because they thought they were Palestinian civilians. That's why they fucking killed them. Okay? And you don't have to actually, uh, you know, do a little bit of Google searching to figure that out. Because they did say that early on. Where they thought that they were Palestinians and that's why they shot them. Have your audience is Palestinian or Arab. Yeah, here. Alon Shamriz, Yotam Chaim, and Samer Talalka. A deceased military dog's GoPro camera was discovered to have recorded their voices several days earlier. The dog was involved in a military exchange between Israel and Hamas. Uh, according to IDF official, the three male hostages emerged shirtless out of a building towards IDF soldiers tens of meters away, one carrying a white flag. An Israeli sniper then opened fire on them, killing Shamriz and Talalka and wounding Haim. After being shot, Haim ran into a nearby building and shouted for help. The battalion commander then ordered the troops to hold their fire while Haim was being per uh, persuaded to exit the building. But when he did so, 15 minutes later, a, a soldier acting against the battalion commander's order shot and killed him. They changed this narrative eight times. This was the final narrative that they actually arrived at. As far as I remember, it was a lot closer than a fucking sniper tens of meters away. Israeli troops were primed for an ambush, not the possibility of hostages walking around behind enemy lines in Gaza City. Yeah. Preliminary IDF report. Hostages killed by soldiers wave white flag. One yelled for help in Hebrew. <laughs> what the fuck is this thumbnail, dude? Yeah. They shot them because they thought they were Palestinian, okay? Palestinian civilians, because they shoot Palestinian civilians all the fucking time, okay? I can't believe that this is a question that we have this far into the, to the ongoing genocide that people still are like, I don't really understand it. Why are the genocidaires doing things that kind of seem like it's a genocide, as in a kill zone? Anyway um where the fuck were we we're gonna talk about all this shit in a second there's like leaks from the cabinet too too as well uh beyond uh hirsch goldberg polin of course who was a u.s and israeli citizen all those red-headed palestinians are running around yes brother there are red-headed palestinians this is not like palestinians don't fucking look the way that you think they do they also look almost identical to israelis there's a shit ton of arab jews in israel and there are Palestinian Christians in Gaza. Like, yes, there are people. There is no... This, this is something I've talked about quite a bit from the start, okay? If you put Palestinians and Israelis in a fucking lineup, okay? No yarmulkes, nothing. You will never be able to tell who's Palestinian and who's Israeli, okay? Like, you can't. There are dudes that are literally fucking Arab, they're Arab, but they're Jewish. So therefore, they're Israeli citizens. It's quite similar to the dynamic between motherfucking Greeks and Turks or Armenians and Turks. You can't tell from a fucking lineup. You just can't. Okay? You can't. Yeah, unless they're from Asia or the U.S. Okay, they're, yes. I love you as a Palestinian, but I disagree with that statement, bro. I guess maybe true for the uninitiated non-Arabs. Brother, are, what are you talking about? Like, what do you... Dude, dude, you're ridiculous, okay? You are ridiculous if you think that there is any sort of, like, significant distinction without, like, anyone talking, without anything like that on a fucking lineup, if you think that there is any sort of fucking distinction between a, a, a Jewish person of Arab descent, okay, that came from, like, fucking Yemen or came from fucking, um, came from fucking Iraq, okay or any number of these different places in the region that is just jewish but of all, all from this entire area okay if you think that there's any sort of like trait that you can associate uh to to being jewish ra or rather distinction is determined via penis inspection no because muslims also fucking get circumcised so no you can't even i know you're trying to make a joke but even that joke is not correct Remember when some fucking freak, some ultra Zionist rabid freak early on was talking about how we're going to circumcise the Palestinians? And I was like, bro, what are you talking about? They're Muslim. Of course, they're like, with the exception of the, the, the Christian Palestinians, like they're fucking circumcised.
There are a lot of white Arabs and Palestinians, exactly. Born in uh, Oakland, California, moved to Israel when he was just seven years old. Uh, you have Edin Yerushalmi, a 24-year-old bartender who, uh, not live streamed, but was on the phone during her hours-long ordeal trying to flee to hide from the military. Why would Hamas kill the hostages right before the idea found them? I know it's not confirmed that they did it. I'm just trying to understand their potential reasoning. Would it be to add more pressure? Yes. These hostages, some of them were directly named in the ceasefire in the first round of the hostage transfers, okay? So from their perspective, they're like, Israel is not fucking holding to this deal, and they're trying to forcibly extract the hostages. So if, if uh, they, they understand that, they understand that this is, if they're losing their leverage in this circumstance, yes, for their, for their perspective, those hostages being killed in the last moment, whether by Israeli gunfire or by Palestinian gunfire, it, it causes what is currently happening in Israel from their perspective. And it demonstrably has been, regard, I don't know who is responsible for it, like I said, I'm waiting for confirmation, of course, but, um, but it is in their interest if we're looking at this uh, in a logical manner, it is in their interest to say, like, you don't get the hostages unless you do a deal. It's the same. I mean, it's 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 quite simple when you think about it. Um, it's you've seen it in movies. You know, why does the fucking guy? Why does the why does the hostage taker in a fucking bank robbery kill hostages? It is to apply pressure to uh, the the hostage negotiators. Of course, in movies, usually the police don't fucking shoot through the hostages and then blow up the entire city block and then blow up the rest of the city, as a matter of fact, with no need for, like, actually extracting any of the fucking hostages. That's what Israel's doing. So it's not like, you know, it's not like the movies at all, unless you're talking about, like, a World War II-style movie. As they rampage through the Nova Festival, uh, killing, raping, and kidnapping as they went. Uh, she uh, spoke with her sister. She had her sisters on the phone. And Peace. her last words to her sister, Shani, was, Shani, they caught me. Uh, there was Carmel Gutt, 40 years old, the only one of these six bodies who were recovered, that were recovered on Saturday, who was not at the Nova Music Festival. She was visiting her parents at Kibbutz Be'eri, just on the outskirts of the Gaza Strip. Her mother was killed that day. Her father survived. Um, and indeed, hostages who were released during the one and only hostage ceasefire deal back in November said that she was like a guardian angel uh, to them and she was teaching them meditation and yoga. Uh, then you also have Almog Sarusi, 27 years old, he was with his girlfriend of five years. She was shot and mortally wounded. He stayed with her to try and help, uh, but then wound up being kidnapped himself and taken into the Gaza Strip. Alexander Lobanov, a 32-year-old Russian-Israeli citizen, he was a bar manager at the Nova Music Festival. Uh, he was uh, said to have uh, fled with, uh, helped others to flee to the nearby Be'eri forest to seek refuge, but they were caught um, and he was taken captive as well. His wife gave birth to their second child, a boy, uh, five months ago, a boy that he will never meet and that will never meet its father. And then finally, there's Ori Danino, 25 years old, uh, who is said to have uh, driven a number of people from the Nova Music Festival to safety in his car. And then instead of staying in the safety that he had found, he turned back around and went back into uh, where the militants were, into the gunfire to try to rescue more people, and then wound up being kidnapped himself as well. So those are the six. Also worth noting that, according to the IDF, there are still more than 100 hostages uh, who are still being held captive in the Gaza Strip, about a third of whom are believed to be dead. Victor, Amra. Elliot Gawkin, thank you. Joining me now to discuss this is former Pentagon advisor for the Middle East, Jasmine El-Gamal. Um, Jasmine, I, I first want to get your reaction to what we've been learning through Nick Robertson's report. And that IDF saying that they were brutally murdered by Hamas just a short while before they were reached by the IDF. That's right. Good morning, Amra, and thanks for having me. And I'd, I'd like to start first by just expressing my heartfelt condolences to the families of these hostages whose bodies have been recovered. It's, it's just the latest in a series of really heartbreaking news that's come out of Gaza and Israel. Hassan, do you know who the hysterian, historian Benny Morris is? Yeah, more like a fucking hysterical uh, Benny Morris. Yes, he is. Uh, he is. Every single day that uh, that Israel continues its uh, genocide, he becomes more and more unhinged. I recently watched him talk to Mehdi Hassan in front of a crowd 
that literally fucking lost their minds when he said, I don't know what the term famine means. Okay. He is completely, he is deeply, deeply unserious. And, um, his former work was obviously very important in, uh, in, in uncovering certain aspects of Israeli history, but his current attitude towards his own former work and his current attitudes towards like just being a fucking like open, unabashed, unashamed fucking anti-Arab racist piece of shit uh, is, is pretty fucking crazy. He was so unhinged that he literally said he was so unhinged that he said that uh, the person responsible for I think it was like the UN Human Rights Commission. The person leading the UN Human Rights Commission was a Syrian and therefore you can't trust an Arab. You can't trust a Syrian with uh, that responsibility. Like, it's crazy. Like, he literally said that as, like, an own. Chief prosecutor. As he said uh, Israeli occupation hasn't bombed any hospitals in Gaza, earning laughs of disbelief from the audience. Here, this is, this is Benny Morris. For arrest warrants, not just for Hamas leaders, but for the Israeli prime minister and the defense minister for war crimes and crimes against humanity. And he says he has mountains of evidence. We've all seen, with our own eyes, the Israelis in Gaza commit war crimes on camera, kill unarmed people who are carrying white flags, blow up apartment buildings, drop 2,000 pound bombs on crowded refugee camps. Can we at least agree, Benny, even if we're gonna disagree on genocide, that Israel has committed numerous war crimes since the Hamas war crimes on October the 7th? I'm fairly sure there have been war crimes, but the war itself is not a war crime, as the Hamas attack on Israel on the 7th of October was. It was a war crime from beginning to end. The aim was to kill as many civilians as possible which they did in accordance with the Hamas charter, which is to kill basically every Jew you can get hold of in Palestine. But I didn't ask about the aim. I asked about the acts that are being committed. As I said, probably there have been, as in all wars, war crimes. You committed. accept there have been war crimes? Yes. So you would support an arrest warrant for Benjamin Netanyahu? I didn't say that. Why? Firstly, there hasn't been an arrest warrant. I know, there's been a request been from the ICC request, chief okay. prosecutor. So far, they haven't issued it. I don't know if you can hold a prime minister responsible if a sergeant kills several unarmed people intentionally. You don't think the Israeli Air Force bombing apartment buildings, refugee camps, mosques, if, if, cemeteries? I like the idea that <laughs> I like the idea that like all of this stuff just randomly happens. You know what I mean? And that the ICC and the ICJ aren't like conducting a broad, thorough, albeit still probably heavily influenced by Western interests, analysis on the matter before coming to certain conclusions. Like, like they're not just, they're not fucking hysterical uh, college campus activists in the way that these guys try to present them, okay? Like, they're conducting serious investigations, man. Serious investigations that the Mossad and the Israeli government regularly try to thwart, mind you, okay? Like, there is obviously a fucking line from the prime minister all the way down to the fucking soldier committing the crime. And it's a, it's a thing that they are choosing to fucking... Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a thorough line that they're choosing to investigate. Like, they're actually saying, like, this exists. This connection exists. What the fuck? Hospitals, if schools, the ho if the universities, libraries. Firstly, it hasn't bombed, as far as I know, hospitals. I they have attacked. <laughs> no, 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 no. Every no expert agrees with you on that. That's Do not. That's not true. What you're saying is not true. You'll watch this, but won't watch Mehdi and Victor Gao on China. Yeah, of course I'm not gonna watch it. It is not because it's against the narrative. It's because I like Mehdi Hassan, and I don't like him behaving like a Western chauvinist when uh, talking to a, a Chinese official and that it's more so to preserve his legacy in my mind, okay? And yeah, of course, I'm not gonna watch some random fucking coverage uh, of Mehdi Hassan like talking to a, a Chinese official in the midst of like ongoing genocide. This is obviously directly relevant. I wouldn't have even brought this up if a charter didn't bring the, the Benny Morris uh, subject matter up. What the fuck does China have to do with anything? Yes, this is the same, like, uh, Mao guy. You already said you won't ever watch it, even if it was on topic? Yes, and it is not because... It is not because of... of... Oh, my God. I don't give a fuck about Victor Gao and how, uh, how well he defends China or whatever, okay? It is more so, in my mind, to preserve my opinion of Mehdi Hassan, okay? That's it. I like Mehdi Hassan, but there are plenty of instances where I have been... Um, 
uh, where I have been at odds with him in terms of, for example, how he also, in my opinion, highlighted false smears against Jeremy Corbyn being anti-Semitic and shit like that. He's doing a great job with this issue, okay? But you don't have to always agree with everything uh, that a political commentator says. You should practice that sometimes with me as well. You might not agree with all of the things that I believe, all the things that I say, but that doesn't that shouldn't change your your overall uh, worldview on on uh, who I am as a person. Okay, the conduct is not rewarded. Uh, the IDF for military rescue operations. Oh yeah, the conduct is to not reward the IDF for military rescue operations. As far as I remember, they've done it a few times before. Sometimes just when the building is being bombed. And they think an operation is coming, even when it wasn't. I think it's wrong. It, it's definitely brutal, but I'm not sure what any dumb fuck who thinks about military pressure thinks this would happen in this kind of situation. Yeah, and the alternative to that is to be is not to say like, oh, I can't believe how fucking uh, these guys did this, like how crazy of them. The alternative to that is already presented in the form of a fucking ceasefire. So that's the whole point. This is just another. This is just another fucking. Uh, this is just another pressure mechanism for Israel to actually come to terms with the ceasefire. That's what it is. Because it's not like if they were on the one hand, if Hamas was on the one hand being like, yeah, we don't want a ceasefire. We just want to kill these fucking people. Okay. And then Israel was conducting this military operation. Then, yeah, that makes sense. That, that it, It's perfectly understandable to be like, oh, what the fuck? These guys are psychotic. Okay. Except, except obviously, if, if, ceasefires on the table and those hostages are named okay like by name they're like these are some of the hostages that we are going to release in the first fucking ceasefire negotiations and and benjamin and now is like nah dog i don't give a fuck i want to maintain military presence in the philadelphia corridor in the netzarim corridor we're going to do a permanent occupation i don't give a fuck about this ceasefire suck my dick then yeah of course of course like uh, you know, people are going to get mad at Netanyahu. True. The only hospital which I remember being okay. bombed was by a rocket fired oh by the God. Islamic Jihad oh my by God. mistake. Oh That's my as far God. as I remember. So, Israel so, has raided hospitals. So let me, Israel, let, 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 me, let me talk. Let, Israel's raided hospitals, they've never bombed a hospital, is an insane thing to say because they absolutely have bombed the hospitals. They literally bombed the Al Ahli hospital, okay? They're like, oh, it was an Islamic Jihad rocket that he says, right? Again, inconclusive, but let's say he's correct, okay? Inconclusive, but let's say he's correct that it was actually an Islamic Jihad misfire. Israel bombed that hospital two days prior to that explosion at the courtyard. Like, they literally bombed Al Ahli Hospital, which is so crazy that, like, the idea that, like, Israel has not bombed any hospital is so fucking insane to me. Okay, so fucking insane. But that specific hospital, Israel literally fucking shelled with artillery fire two days prior to the fucking explosion at the courtyard. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, even that very specific hospital that he is talking about, Israel openly fucking bombed. It's insane how that's still a narrative that even you were a victim to it. I know it's fucking crazy. That's how powerful media narratives are, though, because the media immediately went Israel blew up this hospital again. Holy shit. In the deadliest day in Gaza so far. Right. And then they all apologized for it and immediately took Israel's word for it. And then that was over. Everyone was like, oh, I told you so. You're fucking wrong. It's like there is no proof. All the proof that Israel presented was immediately falsified, like immediately. Every single piece of proof that Israel showed was exactly what they've fucking done in the past. Put out correspondence between two Palestinian terrorists being like, oh, we, we love blowing up our own hospitals. <laughs> Listen, we are terror children. I am Arab Palestinian. Even though Palestinian is not real, it's not a real thing. We lie to Israel, the most moral army about it. <laughs> it's crazy. Let Israel has raided hospitals but with infantry. Let me ask it's you this found question. Hamas uh, people in their Hamas headquarters inside hospitals, when under hospitals. Actually, we've never seen the headquarters of Benjamin Netanyahu put a beautiful Bond movie video out for. We've never actually seen that from underneath Al Shifa. It's been several months. We're still waiting. But we only hear the pro Israel side, not the truth that comes out a week later in most cases. Yeah. In, in the Western world, like, I get it. You usually don't fucking hear. 
you usually don't hear what the actual truth of the matter is. That's precisely the reason why there's like still a shit ton of people. That's precisely the reason why there's a, still a shit ton of people who are like, I don't understand. Isn't like Hamas ruining the fucking peace talks? It's like, bro, what do you mean? What do you fucking mean? Israel killed the principal negotiator, the civilian that was heading the Politburo. Okay. A fucking diplomat on Iranian soil in the midst of the hostage negotiations that he was partaking in. There is no better display that you don't want the ceasefire to happen than doing exactly that. Okay. It's so fucking crazy, dude. It's so fucking crazy. Like, like what the wildest part about it is that like, what more do you want to hear? Do you want Israeli officials to say, we do not want this ceasefire. That's why we're killing the fucking, uh, uh, the leader of the Politburo because they did say that that's the other part. Like there is like word for word, Benjamin Netanyahu has for the past, like three months now openly been like, there's no ceasefire. Get the fuck out of here. We're not going to do a ceasefire. You're going to give us the hostages and we're going to keep bombing you. He has said that bar for bar pretty much every fucking day he said that to israeli citizens he said that to anyone that will listen and america is like hamas man really fucking this up dude <laughs> really fucking the ceasefire negotiations up bro benjamin Netanyahu said it to the hostage families he said it in fucking congress He's, he keeps saying it he keeps saying no ceasefire what the fuck are these guys talking about and america is like no 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 no, no. we're working tirelessly around a ceasefire and it's hamas that's ruining the talks you know, it's crazy. Like he has telegraphed time and time again that he does not want to fucking ceasefire. Okay. And he keeps adding like new protocols, new provisions, all this shit onto the point, uh, onto the conversation that already is like, it, that is a done deal. Okay. And it's wild that Americans are still by and large deluded by our media into thinking like, oh, well, I heard, I read in the news that it's actually Hamas. Anyway. Over the last 10 months, it's absolutely brutal. Um, to your question, now, it is true that reportedly some of the hostages have been slated yeah, for remember, release. This it's is... been reported. Hey guys, remember, this is the hospital Al-Shifa that Benny Morris is talking about, which Israel definitely didn't bomb. Here in what used to be Shifa Hospital in the north of Gaza and Gaza City. Hospitals should always be Hospitals just kind of do that, though, to themselves when they're under great distress, so... Places of safety, hospitals should always be protected, places of healing. And yet I'm standing around in the midst of utter devastation. Shifa has literally become a graveyard. There are bodies still in this courtyard. The buildings have been completely destroyed. This is Al Shifa. This is... This is one of the major hospitals. This is the one... This isn't Al Ahli. He's talking about Al Ahli, okay, which is the other hospital that was also, uh, again, that was blown up. This is the major one that's supposed to have a fucking headquarters underneath it, okay? One of the largest hospitals, the largest hospital in Gaza City, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this is what they presented it as. This is why they fucking had to do that to it. Because, hey, we made this, like, 3D rendering. Remember... Chad, remember this is what they said was under the fucking Al Shiva Hospital. Remember that? Oh my God. That Hirsch Goldberg Poland was one of those names that had been approved by Hamas for release, and that the deal had continued to be held up because Prime Minister Netanyahu had refused to concede on that point of having Israeli troops controlling the Gaza side of the Egypt Gaza border, also known as the Philadelphia Corridor. Let's start in Gaza, where the Israeli military has confirmed that six bodies found in a tunnel in the city of Rafa were those of hostages held by Hamas after the October the 7th attack. It's named them as Israelis Alexander Lobanov, Almog Sarusi, Eden Yerushalmi, Ori Danino, Carmel Gat, and Hirsch Goldberg Polin, who was an American citizen. He had appeared in a Hamas video with an amputated arm. You want to know that something that's crazy? That hospital that you saw, that, that bombed out fucking shell of a hospital you saw, it's still in operation, by the way. Like, as of today, Al Shifa Hospital is set to resume operations in its emergency and accidents departments today. This development is a testament to the exceptional determination 
and perseverance that Gaza's medical teams exhibited. Because what the fuck are they supposed to do? They have nothing. Okay? The hospital was bombed multiple times by Israeli forces in November, severely damaging its infrastructure. It was placed under siege by Israel in mid-November, bombed five times in 24 hours, and by November 11th, it was forced out of service. Al-Shifa reopened three operations theaters within its surgical unit. These were primarily used for trauma cases. Uh, the hospital also maintained essential services, including emergency care, basic laboratory, and radiological facilities, post-operative care, and a dialysis unit. Israel stormed the facility again in March, putting it out of service forever, according to his acting chairman. They bombed the fuck out of the hospital. There's like, it, most of the hospital compound is like a shell, and the rooms that are standing, they're still trying to fucking utilize. The craziest part about it is, the craziest part about it is that Israel uses this Israel uses Palestinian resilience, okay, and, and the uh, perseverance that the Palestinians exhibit every fucking day, surviving against all fucking odds, as a testament that they're like, we're not doing a genocide. Look, see, they still have one of the fucking eight buildings that isn't completely carved out, and they're still trying to operate out of those, uh, out of those buildings, okay? Just like... When Palestinians were forced to go to the beach, okay, because there was no other place that they could fucking survive, and they would clean themselves up by going into the fucking uh, water, they were like, see, they're having a fun time at the beach. It's not a real genocide. It's crazy. You don't have to kill every single person, dude. You don't have to kill every single person, like, and, and blow it up. Or you don't have to, you don't have to be like, well, we have the weapons to kill every single person. And we're not doing it, so how can you say it's a genocide? Like, that is crazy to me. That is an insane thing to mention. It is sad and ironic that it is the exact same kind of Nazi bullshit that you hear from Holocaust deniers. Oh, the camps had pools in them. How can you say, how can you say that these guys are being sent to concentration camps? These Jews are being killed in concentration camps. They have pools in them. It's crazy. Oh. A few months ago, in a statement, President Biden called his death tragic and reprehensible, saying Hamas leaders will pay for their crimes. The Missing Families Forum has again urged Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to agree to a ceasefire for the release of the remaining hostages. Elsewhere, three Israelis have died after their vehicle was fired on near the city of Hebron in the occupied West Bank. Well, with me now is Mohammed Taha from BBC Arabic. Uh, Mohammed, let's start first of all with the news of the bodies of six hostages that have been found. What more do we know about the operation in order to be able to find them and recover those bodies? So the operation was to secure just a tunnel where the Israeli forces found an alive uh, hostage last week, Al Qadi, a Bedouin uh, hostage. So the Israeli forces was just trying to clear the tunnel, and they found the bodies there. So they didn't go there upon uh, an intelligence information or something. They just found them uh, while they are searching the tunnel. So the circumstances around the killing. So Israeli, uh, there is exchange of, uh, of accusations. The Israeli is saying that Hamas killing, killed them intentionally. For the record, just because you hear someone uh, who is uh, an Arab on BBC, who has a thick Arabic accent on BBC, does not mean that uh, they are going to look at the situation without uh, any sort of bias, especially bias that uh, might favor uh, the Israeli position. Just want to point that out, okay? You hear, you hear someone with like a thick Egyptian Arab accent and you think, oh, like this guy is, is going to be an honest broker in this situation. Not saying that he's not, but, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Kaya, you dropped your bone. You want it? You want your bone back? And uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu just issued uh, a, a statement a few minutes ago saying that we will continue to free all hostages and Israel will not uh, rest until we reach the killers. Means, you know, he's in, in, in inciting that the military operation in Gaza would 
continue. But Hamas issued also a statement, and they said uh, that uh, they were killed in an Israeli shelling, and they said that what they described as, as practicing genocide uh, in Gaza and the support of President Biden to Israel. Okay. Um, from October 7 till now, one of the main justifications for the IDF operations was that it would kill, it would just put more pressure on Hamas to cave to Israel's negotiation regarding hostage deals. It worked at first, but after the first few pauses in fighting, Hamas hasn't budged, and yet the pressure stopped benefiting the negotiations and started to directly or indirectly literally kill more of the hostages than it could save. I'm not going to praise the terrorist organization that massacred some of my people for their resilience, but I'm certainly going to laugh at the idea for their incompetence and be disgusted anytime someone in my immediate vicinity says anything positive regarding this American model, bomb people to save whiter people, hotbed of toxic, might makes right ideology. I'm sorry for venting in your chat. Hopefully it was insightful to someone. I was staring at you. Yeah, it just doesn't, um, I don't think it was, I don't think it worked. Like, I don't think the pressure worked at all. I think that they, uh, I think that it was also a strategic like Hamas was open to uh, negotiations, hostage negotiations from October 9th, right? That much we know for a fact, and that much even Israeli media has covered now, right? At this point, not necessarily, you don't really hear about it a lot in American media, but like Israeli media has covered it. The reason for why they were open to it is because one, they knew what the fuck was going to happen to Gaza, and they didn't want that to happen to Gaza, obviously. And two, the reason why they were open to uh, the open the hostage negotiations immediately um, and, and did successfully conduct hostage negotiations, even including the, uh, the unconditional release of the first Israeli hostage, which uh, was the old lady, if you recall, was because they knew they knew that uh, once Israeli society saw that the peaceful way of releasing hostages was something that they were willing to do okay they didn't want her no dude they, it's not that they didn't want her it's that they released the older ladies early on and that was a literal unconditional release okay that they did an unconditional release of two hostages where they just said uh they need emergency care we're just going to release them the reason why they did that is because they wanted to show that their goal, they wanted to show Israeli society that their goal isn't to, you know, do uh, kidnapping so they can do rape and murder in the way that it was being presented, but that there is a peaceful solution to this situation without additional bloodshed. It was to show good faith. It was also to show that, like, they are, like I said, they are uh, th to show the Israeli society that, like, there is obviously a peaceable outcome out of all of this. That is the reason why the ceasefire that took place took seven days. And then Israel immediately started bombing again, if you recall. Because Benjamin Netanyahu recognized that the longer that that ceasefire continues, the more people have an appetite for peace, the more people will demand peace and a, a peaceful uh, end to this uh, process. As they said, is the cause of the death of these hostages. So there is this exchange of accusation between two parties. And how much does this add pressure onto the Prime Minister? We heard the, uh, the comment from the Hostages Families Forum. They've also said that uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu should take responsibility for abandoning the hostages. Indeed. Today is a big day for Israel. In Israel, as the, is Sunday, and everybody came from the Sabbath, we saw in the evening, last evening, a big demonstration asking the Prime Minister there is been Netanyahu to strike a deal. There is a call by the uh, 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 families of the uh, hostages to, for a general strike in 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 Israel. Uh, there is already strike in. What is this? It's been almost a year and they still have hostages. That's all that needs to be said. You can't put a spin on people that take hostages. There's no spin. Yeah, you're right. Um, which is precisely the reason why what Israel is doing is unconscionable, considering that they have. 10x more hostages, or 10,000 hostages at this point, inside of Israeli detention, which is kind of uh, part of the process of of the hostage negotiations that are ongoing, which is to um, which is to release the Palestinians that are being held hostage in Israeli detention uh, facilities. Right? Is that the attitude that you share for the Palestinians that are also being held in detention? 
or do you think they deserve it because they're terrorists chatter do you have a spin for that this is where you say israel is a democracy they have a democratic process even though they don't and then i tell you that it's actually military tribunal and many of those ten thousand people are just unjustifiably detained permanently under something that the entire global international uh international community regards as illegal especially uh to add insult to injury on um a on soil palestinian soil that they operate and that they occupy illegally yeah 99 percent conviction rate at a military tribunal i've had this conversation with people far dumber than you and people far smarter than you a million times over i know exactly what you're going to say before you say it okay what a ridiculous fucking thing to talk about in a country that had a month ago pro-rape riots january 6th style pro-rape riots one of the one of the main rapists in the sedate Taman concentration camp okay where 40 percent of the palestinians detained from the gaza strip are literally released in a week where people are being tortured and raped to death one of the rapists that raped a palestinian to death is now a television star he's a tv personality now for raping a palestinian to death you cannot no matter how hard you try explain this in normal conditions like with with normal words do you have a spin for that do you have a spin for any of that no you don't you got nothing i don't know why people still try this dumb shit in this community this far in go try that on you know the uninitiated in the secondary school, it's supposed to start today, and it did not uh, start. And they are calling the uh, labor syndicates or unions to call for a, a wide strike to try and make this moment where they found the bodies of these hostages a turning point to try to convince the Israeli government to uh, do some action. The Israeli Prime Minister cancelled the annual, uh, sorry, the weekly meeting of the Israeli government that's happening every Sunday mo morning. He cancelled this meeting and there will be a meeting on 4 p.m. local time uh, to uh, to address the issue. This meeting was called by the Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, who is already was vocal about his disagreement with uh, the Prime Minister, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his approach of insisting of having a permanent presence, permanent military presence of the Israeli forces uh, in Gaza. So the situation now uh, in, in, in the Israel Israeli uh, territory is, is really in, in high tension, and as you mentioned, there is also a tension in the West Bank and in Gaza. Well, Mohammed, stay with us. We'll come back to you in a moment, but let's now go live to Jerusalem and to our Middle East correspondent, John Donison. John, we were talking there about the divisions in Benjamin Netanyahu's cabinet. How much does this latest development add to that? Well, I think Mohammed's right. It reflects the divisions within the government, but also the divisions within Israeli uh, society. Benjamin Netanyahu, in his short statement this morning, said uh, those who kill hostages do not want a deal, referring to the allegation from the Israeli military that these hostages were brutally murdered, in their words, by Hamas shortly before the bodies were found. Hmm. You have like, to remember, though, that back in November last year, we had a season. I mean, they're right. He's right when he says that. It's just that when you look at the numbers, who's responsible for the death of more Israeli hostages in, in Palestinian captivity comes into mind? The answer, of course, is Israel. So he's technically right, you know, when he says those who kill hostages don't want a peace deal in mind. He's not wrong. It's just he's responsible for a large share, a significantly larger share of the uh, dead Israeli hostages directly. I read that as an admission. Fire, temporary ceasefire, where hostages were being exchanged for Palestinian prisoners every day. That went on for about a week with roughly 10 hostages a day coming out. Like, I knew everything I needed to fucking know on October 8, dude when there were Palestinian resistance groups still firmly holding positions inside of Israeli, the inside, inside of the Israeli borders. And Israel's first reaction wasn't to secure its own boundary, but was instead to bomb Gaza. Okay? You do not fucking do that if you want to actually secure the hostages. 
As a matter of fact, Israel also blew up their own hostages in the extraction or uh, during the, the um during the process on October 7, when Palestinian resistance groups were trying to take hostage Israelis to bring them back to Gaza. They started blowing people up, their own citizens, on October 7. You can say fake news all you want, dude. Go read one fucking singular Israeli article. Jesus Christ. This does not mean that they killed, like, the majority of the uh, Israelis on October 7. I'm not saying that. I've never said that. And early on, when reports were coming out, I didn't jump to that conclusion either. What I'm simply talking about is they started bombing Gaza immediately. That was the truth. You don't do that if you are trying to cure the, the lives of Israeli citizens. Okay? Don't do that. And a lot of questions being asked about why didn't Israel continue with that process for a longer period and yeah, then he's really admitted to everything that i'm talking about by the way it's like fucking crazy that people still call in the question something se that seems so unconscionable it's like the top of the hour ad break it's like that there's no way this guy serves a three-minute ad break at the top of the hour that's unconscionable but i do okay at the top of the hour i do that i serve it now if you no longer want to see those ads all you need to do is subscribe which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted a sub. Here's a three-minute ad break now. And some of those who we now know have died uh, might have been freed. The, certainly the hostage uh, families forum saying today that the people whose bodies have been found today would have been alive today if a hostage deal could have been done. And uh, we have heard reports, haven't we, of... Uh Mr. Netanyahu's defense minister disagreeing with him as well and, and accusing him of putting his emphasis on uh, deploying IDF in the Philadelphia corridor over the hostages. What more can you tell us about that? Just so you know, Barack Hiram, the guy who ordered the shell 12 captives in a house in Bay Area on October 7, full Hannibal, is being promoted by BB to the top commander of the Gaza division. It also turns out he's a right wing messianic freak who could have guessed. I mean, Best, best commanders, dude, are loyal servants, you know? Loyal soldiers to the cause. It makes sense. Yeah, well, the last time the security cabinet met earlier this week, uh, there are reports of a shouting match between Yoav Gallant and Prime Minister Netanyahu. Yoav Gallant saying that this insistence on in leaving Israeli forces in the Philadelphia corridor, that's the border area between Gaza and Egypt, was blocking a deal. That is something that Mr. Netanyahu has insisted uh, he is going to pursue and, and continue with. You have to remember that within his gov government, there are also more hardline elements who want Israel to be doing more militarily and have said they will resign from the government, bringing the government down if a ceasefire deal is done. And I'm talking about Itamar Ben Gavir, the hardline national security minister, and all, also the finance minister, Mr. Smotrich, who have said they will pull out of the government. So he is torn, Mr. Netanyahu, as he has been now for months, of trying to keep his government together, but also the pressure building for a ceasefire deal, not just from diplomats, but also from Israeli citizens, and in particular those hostage families. And, John, we have also been hearing about three Israelis who've been killed after their vehicle was fired on... Uh, near the city of Hebron. What's the latest on that? Yes, well, you'll be aware, looks to me, that for the past four or five days there have been intensified Israeli military operations in the north of the West Bank targeting uh, Palestinian militants. At least 20 people have been killed in those raids and strikes on Palestinian cities. And Israel says it's trying to protect its citizens from attacks. Well, in the south of the West Bank, Bank, near Hebron, which is the biggest Palestinian city in the occupied West Bank, three Israeli police officers were killed in a shooting attack overnight on their car. Uh, and uh, we've not got the details of their names. Hebron, by the way, is obviously the absolute worst in terms of, in terms of like the way that, um, like some of the most rabid freaks, some of the most rabid settler freaks are in uh, Hebron. <laughs> I'm 
someone say friendly fire? I don't know. I mean, potentially. I wouldn't be surprised. I actually would not be surprised because for the record, that happens in the West Bank all the fucking time. It would not be the first time this happened in the West Bank. It will not be the last time it happened in the West Bank. They have armed the fuck out of these inbred hicks with American weapons of war and they're unhinged and they quite literally, the settlers quite literally kill Israeli citizens. They killed, there was a settler that killed a, a Israeli police officer like a couple months ago, straight up, the Israeli police officer like shot a Palestinian kid who I think was like who had scissors or a knife or something. He was like doing a knife attack. And then a settler straight up walked up to him and shot him. Thought he was Palestinian. You want to know something crazy? They originally weren't going to prosecute him. And then pu the public was mad as fuck. They were like, what do you mean you're not going to prosecute him? He killed a cop. Yeah. So they had to detain him afterwards. Look it up. Real story that took place. A settler shot a Palestinian from point blank rage in the village of Tawani. No, this is not what I'm talking about. No, no, there was a fucking either like off duty cop or I think it was like literally a cop and a settler teenager shot and fucking killed him. Some of the worst for sure. As far as the occupation's effects, a West Bank settler shot and killed a fucking cop a couple months back. Yet, but certainly that is a another dangerous development in the West Bank, which the warning is that there could be a war in the West Bank, similar to what we've happened has been happening in Gaza for the past 10 or 11 months. John, thank you. That's our Middle East correspondent, John Donison, live in Jerusalem for us. Well, we begin with Chief Foreign Correspondent Trey Yingst in Tel Aviv, Israel. And Trey, uh, we understand. I just want to uh, point out a really effective solution for cops, soldiers, pretty much anybody that doesn't want to get fucking killed in the West Bank. Um, it's called not violating international law and the sovereignty of Palestinians by permanently occupying this territory that does not belong to you. And then uh, routinely defending some of the most rabid supporters of Israel's genocide and ongoing occupation, the settlers. It's like a really simple solution. It's called don't fucking consistently uh, kill Palestinians in the West Bank as a part of your <clears throat> as a part of your permanent occupation in violation of international law as a matter of fact the citizen who was involved in neutralizing the terrorists raised his hands and was accidentally shot to death by soldiers the two fighters who helped eliminate the terrorists at the scene of the attack in Jerusalem shot at the civilian who was mortally wounded the death of the citizen was pronounced at the hospital thus increasing no this isn't it by the way this isn't even it dude this happens so fucking frequently holy shit i remember the dude i remember the kid it was a kid Israeli settler kills Palestinian teenager in Hawara. No, no. There was a Israeli settler in the West Bank that fucking shot and killed an Israeli cop. Okay, it's fine. If you can't find it, there's a million of them. You're sending me all the other ones. It's, it's okay. It happens so goddamn frequently. It was an ex-cop, I think. Yeah, it might not have been a it might not have been a current police officer. It might have been an ex-cop. And there are quite a few demonstrations taking place behind you on this very sad day. Tell us about them. Yeah, Nita, good afternoon. Thousands of people have gathered in the streets of Tel Aviv, Israel's second largest city, to call for a hostage deal. Overnight, the military announced that six Israeli hostages were killed by Hamas inside the Gaza Strip as Israeli forces moved in. I want to show you this spontaneous demonstration that has erupted in Tel Aviv. They are calling for a deal from the Israeli government. They have waited 331 days for their loved ones to come out of Gaza. And this devastating news overnight that six of those hostages will be buried. Some funerals taking place today. At least one will happen tomorrow in Jerusalem. As we gather more details about these individuals, you start to understand just how close they were to freedom. Uh, the story you're referring to happened in Jerusalem. He was a soldier off duty and the settler shot him. Yeah. A senior Israeli official talking to Fox News earlier today told me that three of the hostages were on the list of humanitarian captives that were going to be exchanged if a ceasefire took place and unfortunately they were not able to make it out of Gaza alive and again these demonstrators have gathered to call for an immediate ceasefire and hostage deal among those who were killed by Hamas according to the military 
Hirsch Goldberg Poland. His story grabbed the attention of the world. The 23-year-old was attending a music festival on Black Saturday when the October 7th massacre took place. He hid inside of a bomb shelter, Hamas ultimately throwing hand grenades into the shelter, and he was wounded at that time. He lost his arm, but he survived so many days in captivity. There was a hostage video that showed Hirsch and his family, even this week, calling for his release at the Gaza border. This has been a devastating time for the Israeli people, and again, they are in the streets of Tel Aviv tonight, calling for a hostage deal with more than 100 Israelis dead and some alive still being held by Hamas inside Gaza. Anita? Yeah, and it uh, looks as though emotions are running very high there, understandably. Chief Foreign Correspondent Trey Yangst in Tel Aviv. Trey, thank you so much. I want to go straight back to Nick Robertson in Tel Aviv. Uh, it was in the middle of these protests that really seemed to be heating up. There were fires on the street. You're wrong. It was a story at length. It was Aviad Frisia. You can find a picture of the left if you scroll down. A week after the attack in Jerusalem, the reserve is... Oh, yeah. No, this is the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is not the story you sent me, Time Without a... Oh, oh, yeah. This is the guy. Yes! This is the guy. Oh, okay. You're right. I saw the victim, I think. Yeah. That's the fucking dude. Don't let him gaslight you, King. Yeah, I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm gaslighting. Crazy anti-Semitism happening in Israel right now? Yeah, I know. Guys, there's a lot. You know it's getting fucking insane when Fox fucking news is softly advocating for a ceasefire. Reason is non-relevant. BB is what happens when Trump's presidency led to some of the mass tragedy. Conservatives and centrists can wake up to how much their own decisions hurt them, although they don't make those very same decisions several months later because they can't help themselves. Exactly. Um, by the way, straight up, this is what happens when you let motherfuckers run their freak flag fly okay like let's be clear these protests don't give a solitary fuck about the genocide they're upset the genocide was uh wasn't conducted to their liking there's a lot of people there that definitely don't care and want it to continue or at least turn a blind eye to the death and destruction of the palestinians okay having said that however you know don't look a gift horse in the mouse a uh, mouth like that, okay? This is the obvious byproduct of the way Israel has conducted itself throughout this entire fucking process. In the mouth, low, shut up! ESL, I'm ESL, suck my dick, okay? Streets, uh, Nick, what are you seeing? Yeah, Alex, we are joining us in the middle of a crowd here. Just behind us here is the highway. People are gathered to watch what the police are doing. The police just moved in here with the water cannon. They didn't use the water cannon on people. There was a big fire in the highway right behind me. There's the police water cannon going through. Big fire, trees down on the highway. The police moved in to put that fire out. There's also police on horseback here. They're not engaging uh, violently with the crowd, but they are moving through here in a really determined way to put out the fire. And I'm just going to ask Pete to join me here, ask these gentlemen to clear out the way so we can maybe get a better shot, guys, of uh, what's going on. Uh, Pete, if you look here, I'm just going to swing over the barrier, uh, get in the road. Pete's going to come over the barrier with me now. So we're in the highway now. That is the fascist imperial boomerang. All of the tactics that Israel uses that many of those people actually fucking love and support upon the Palestinian population will inevitably be used on them when they inevitably have to, when they inevitably have to fucking criticize. And by the way, uh, they are using skunk water, I'm pretty sure. Busha! Busha! This is, for the record, a technique that has been used on Palestinian homes in the West Bank. It's a chemical that they have used, and they used it in the fucking uh, Supreme Court protest as well. A technique used upon the Palestinians historically will inevitably be used upon Israeli society as well. LRADs, also known as long-range acoustic devices, originally were used for crowd dispersal in Iraq. 20 years later, every single police precinct has one. 
and they use it on American citizens, okay? The techniques that the colonial occupation uses on the outgroup, they will inevitably use on you as well. Yeah, skunk water is, uh, is a chemical that uh, the... Skunk water is a chemical that uh, the Israeli government uses, the occupying force uses on uh, Palestinian homes in their effort to, uh, in their effort to basically, you know, make it uh, unlivable. Russia! 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 Police are throwing stun grenades in the Tel Aviv crowd. Labor Party legislator Nama Lazimi has been wounded. You support domestic terrorism. You're a traitor and you spread war propaganda for a terrorist organization and blood libel against your own country. While there is a war going on in your country, while hostage negotiations are going on, you should be in prison. Ukrainian flag in the bio, American flag in the bio, Israeli flag in the bio. Love that. Love that, dude. Oh, now you can get a better picture, Alex, of what is happening here. This is the police water truck that is clearing off the, the fire in the highway. But I'm also going to just turn around a little here so to paint the whole scene. So you got police on, on horseback, motorbike, police on horseback here, keeping this big crowd that's on the hillside, keeping them back. And I'll just ask Pete to swing around with me this way as well. And you can see up the street there, the crowd will just move out of the way of this other cameraman. The crowd is still on the street. The police are trying to clear them away. So what you're looking at here really is a crowd control with fires here that have been burning out. We're just moving away to get a little bit away from, uh, from the sound. Just gonna step out in the road a little bit here, Alex, so that you can see what's going on. You have the police up here. This is a, as you can see, you're joining us in a very active, very mobile bit of this demonstration. The demonstration was in the center of the city. It was around the main defense building. It is all about convincing the prime minister to do a deal on the hostages. But here you have line of police vehicles, policemen on this side of the road over here. And here you have the crowds. So it's moving. A few minutes ago, the focus was down the road there where we were 100 meters away, 100 yards away. Now the crowd is here. Listen, call me a utilitarian, but if Israelis are going to fucking riot, I'd rather have them riot on behalf of a ceasefire negotiation than a pro-rape riot where they are trying to actively free um, a couple Israeli prison guards that were detained when they raped the Palestinian to fucking death in the concentration camp of Sadei Taman. You know what I mean? I'll take this riot over the other ones every day. Great. Good stuff. It's not a violent situation at all. There's, there, there's not violence down here, but there's a real sense that people, as we were speaking about before, want to use this moment, this moment, to find a way to communicate with the prime minister that they really want to see change. And the way that they're trying to communicate that at the moment is by shutting the highway. We've seen them try to shut the highway. And when I say highway, this is the main highway that swings north-south in Tel Aviv. Uh, the road's clear, but there's no traffic on it at the moment, so it's, it's not really open. So the crowd is trying to make it clear, trying to make their protests clear, and trying to get themselves heard by the Prime Minister, Alex. Uh, Nick, the, these scenes are certainly something uh, that Hamas uh, would like to see, these deep divisions uh, among the Israeli government <laughs> and, and the I Israeli people. Uh, but this anger from the Israelis uh, towards Netanyahu has been... Bro, are you Benjamin Netanyahu? Like, you're in America, man. You are not... Like, why are you representing... Like, that is a crazy fucking statement from CNN or from Jake fucking Tapper. It's like, dog, you are in America. You're an American citizen. Do your fucking job and cover the news. You literally are angling it. Like, this is what you're going to hear from Benjamin Netanyahu tomorrow. Okay? Like, why are you giving him talking points today? What the fuck? He's literally just, like, repeating what Benjamin Netanyahu is going to say tomorrow, what his supporters are saying right now. That's crazy to me that a guy is, is 
literally outflanking Israeli fucking PR spin. Wow, these protesters are really giving Hamas everything that they want. <laughs> You're insane. American media is insane, bro. That's insane. What are you? Are you Benjamin Netanyahu? Why are you saying that? Been on full display for months. Uh, we've all been in, in those oh, protests, but as you were you saying, Nick, like this him. may be the biggest series of protests uh, that we have seen yet coming on the heels this, of, of this horrific news of these six hostages uh, who were killed. What are the people out there telling you in terms of why they believe that their prime minister has not agreed to a deal or not done enough to reach a deal that would bring the hostages home? Bro didn't take one step away from saying protesters are Hamas. He said the protesters are doing Hamas's bidding, chat. He literally said that. This is this is akin to being like, these protesters are anti-Semitic. I'm losing my mind, dude. Yeah, all protesters are Hamas, even the Israeli ones. Yeah, they must be funded by Iran. People here believe that the prime minister is looking out for his own political career and future because if the war ends, if there's a deal and the war ends, he could find himself uh, out of job as prime minister. If there was an election, he probably, or his coalition probably wouldn't be reelected. And if he was no longer prime minister, then it would face a number of uh, criminal charges that are stacked up against him and pending. He can't be charged, and though, well, those cases can't go forward while he's prime minister. So people believe that he is holding on, um, not just as he says, because he thinks this is the best way to defeat Hamas, but because uh, it's his own political career that's at stake. Those are the charges that many people believe and level against uh, the prime minister. And certainly uh, Yahya Simwar of, uh, of Hamas absolutely uh, studies the political situation in Israel. He spent many years learning Hebrew while he was in jail, studying the, how the politics here works, looking at where divisions are, and he's trying to exploit those divisions. He sees the potential to create discord. He sees the moments where he can try to put the, use the people of Israel's pressure on the prime minister. This is, is a Hamas tactic. It appears that by killing these hostages, he is trying to do that. You know, the, the, if you will, in the vernacular, the card that he has pay, played here or the capital he has spent down uh, on his bank balance, if you will, of hostages that he has still alive in reserve is to send not just a Dude, that's awesome. Like, that's kind of that's kind of crazy. Like CNN, bro, they should have they should have conducted a separate investigation not with like <clears throat> whatever the fucking channels were that were like the newspapers that were like writing that had like the pay uh the the paid scheme to be like pro netanyahu that's the ongoing court case that uh might land him in jail by the way part of the reason why he wants to continue the genocide they should have looked into cnn bro uh walla oh okay thank you yeah they should have fucking looked at like what he did to cnn because oh my god like Them's got CNN moving like Fox News. Bro, this is like, this is crazy, dude. What the fuck? My man, straight up. I shit you not. This is something Israeli media would never say. America is the really giga grand evil supreme lord. Holy fuck. Like, imagine looking at a crowd of Israeli citizens who are like, bro, our friends are fucking dying. We need them out, okay? After 11 months and going, these guys are doing the bidding behind me of Yahya Sinwar who is a brilliant mastermind who understands Israeli society and learned Hebrew in Israeli prison. And they're all working at his, they're all working in his stead to dismantle the Israeli government. It's like, that's insane. Like you are not a journalist, dude. Channel 14 literally was saying that three hours ago. I mean, of course, but that's like, dude, that's like Israeli Fox news, right? Of course, Israeli Fox news is going to say that. But CNN is not supposed to be Israeli Fox News. It's fucking Israel. It's not even America. Like, you are that fucking tuned in. You are that primed on, like, defending Israel that you are literally running defense for Benjamin Netanyahu at a time when there is obviously po popular mobilization against him. Like, taking a position on, uh, on, on defending Israel is one thing. Taking a position on Israeli domestic affairs in the most right-wing slant you possibly can is entirely different. That's crazy. I'm sure this guy was saying protesting the Iraq war is giving aid and comfort to Al-Qaeda back in 2003 so it rolls off his tongue. I mean, sure. 
but that is crazy he li guys the summarization of the things that unfolded right in front of our eyes is basically the cnn commentator saying these israelis who are protesting benjamin Netanyahu are hamas and are doing hamas's bidding that is crazy one speed on these guys man fucking hell that's awesome oh, that's awesome political signal that is not going to negotiate but to try to undermine the position of the prime minister here by actions that he knows will bring people out on the streets here he knows there's dissatisfaction he knows that two-thirds of israelis want to see a peace deal and get the hostages uh, the hostages freed and he is using any means possible to exploit it that's what he does and that's one of the things that we're seeing manifested here but rest assured and understand that people in israel are acting from their own feelings and their own passions and their own anger with the prime minister that he is not following through on the job that he was voted to do in their opinion and a new election would f he would not be prime minister that's what they believe nick it, it does appear that the news of these six deaths the, the these six hostages has sparked something bigger in terms of protest than we've seen in recent months and it resonates with so many people here because it, it exemplifies everything that they feared was going to happen. The fact that the prime minister, they believe, was digging in too hard and being intransigent on his side of the negotiations with Hamas. Hamas, it appears. As you guys know, Palestinians control the media. Palestinians control Israeli media. Palestinians control every, uh, every sector uh, in Israeli society. And there they are using their unique machinations once again the puppet masters the strings in the hands of yahya sinwar it is so crazy it like it 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 will never not be insane to me that like like the arguments are damn near identical to what like nazis literally said about jewish people it's so wild damn this guy's good